met in uh, one minute, so please send your emails. <laughs> no, just, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Tomasz Perkowski. I'm the vice uh, deputy uh, president or vice president uh, of the Foundation for Polish Science, and uh, I have a pleasure to, to welcome you in the Foundation. Uh, probably I should uh, say a few words about the Foundation and its role in the scientific landscape in, in Poland. Uh, being in Poland, probably you already know that uh, we have two executive uh, agencies for, for science. One is National uh, Science Center, uh, responsible for so-called basic science, and National Center for Research and Development, uh, responsible for applied science. And uh, among these two big players, there's a foundation. If they are elephants, we are the size of cat, let's say. Uh, but uh, we see our, our role in the system as a scout which explores the new possible, possible ways uh, to, to enhance and to support science uh, in Poland. It's a bit, uh, bit difficult to explain who we are, and, but if you are familiar with the German system, we are a bit similar to um, the Volkswagen Stiftung, Volkswagen Foundation which means that we are independent, uh, private foundation, private uh, according to, to the law, however, um, however, we've got our money from uh, public sources. It's a long story, but <laughs> uh, anyway, we are uh, independent, self-governing uh, uh, organization, um, and mobility of scientists was always top priority of the foundation. We started with such program, programs like Columbus, where we uh, sent people, people from Poland to, to another country. Uh, then we moved to homing program, when we, where we encouraged people to come back to Poland, mainly Poles. But uh, soon we realized that it's not enough and now we would like to, to invite more and more people from abroad to Poland. We think that uh, Poland may be an interesting place for doing science and uh, we would like to ask you if you agree with this uh, statement. And uh, we, we are doing this uh, conference uh, together with uh, Startup uh, Foundation to show you uh, other ways of uh, um, professional and uh, personal development in, in Poland. And uh, together we would like to ask you if you agree that Poland is a good place to, to do science, but what obstacles uh, did, you, uh, did you meet in Poland? Uh, what's your experience regarding the Polish institutions, uh, scientific institutions? Are they open to, to foreigners? So I, I hope that uh, the discussion will be vivid and uh, please be, be sincere, be cruel if it's uh, necessary. Um, and uh, some technicalities at the end. Um, our debate is uh, streamed online on uh, our channel on YouTube. Uh, if you think that um, there is a need for somebody to join our discussion, it's a, it's a good time to, to send them uh, an email or text them that they can join us because there is uh, also a special email address, destination fnp.org.pl. You have this on your leaflets probably. So um, if somebody is watching us, uh, they can also send us uh, remarks or, or questions. And of course, this, this uh, address will be open uh, uh, after this, uh, this meeting as well. So uh, if you have any other questions or remarks or statements, please send them to us. And uh, I would like to thank uh, not only the Foundation uh, Startup Hub Poland, but also other institutions which uh, uh, helped us to organize this meeting, uh, national contact points, uh, Polish American Freedom Foundation, uh, Fulbright Commission, DAD, Ministry of Science, and I hope I did not uh, forget about 
anybody, but I have to check. It's very important. It's very important. It's the most important part of, of my speech. Uh, of course, I, uh, I forgot about the Education for Democracy fo Foundation. Do we have a representative? Okay, so they won't be offense. But uh, they, um, they were of great help uh, for us um, in preparing this, uh, this meeting, so thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Maciej uh, Sadowski, uh, the CEO and founder of the Startup Hub Foundation. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. President, distinguished guests, I, I should maybe say friends of Polish science. Uh, I also want to warmly welcome you on this conference. Um, I want to give my thanks to, to the Foundation for Polish Science to organize this, uh, this really profound group of uh, international and Polish scientists who are interested not only in science itself, but also in its commercialization. When you take your programs, you may see that the opening remarks belong to Mr. Marek Bożestowski, and I am here, uh, I am here uh, to make a statement that I'm not Marek Bożestowski, uh, although I'm his co-founder. Uh, three years ago, we, so four years ago, we make up, came up with idea to make a organization, also private organization, also uh, supported heavily by uh, governmental or, um, uh, subsidies. Uh, so it's also a long story. Uh, I think I could pass on this one uh, and uh, I want to say that this organization has been created uh, because we saw a very um, potential on one hand and a big risk on the second hand. Lots of Polish scientists, uh, mo thanks for the European Union, um, um, Schengen Pact and, and globalization, moved to another countries, which is I believe a very um, important and um, positive uh, phenomenon, but also they left lots of space for young, driven, talented uh, researchers, scientists, innovators, inventors, um, from other countries to come here and, and um, substantially support our environment in giving new ways of thinking, new ideas, and creating new technologies which might be helpful not only for them, not only for Poland, not only for their home country, but also for the, for the planet itself. Uh, our role here is uh, to present this other side of, of science, which might be a um, reasonable follow-up for research and, uh, and uh, results of, of scientific surveys of yours, which is commercialization. And I strongly believe that together uh, having such an opportunity which uh, Foundation for Polish Science uh, offers us as a conference and live streaming um, I should say hi YouTubers because right now without them w this, uh, this uh, meeting is not taking place at all. So hi YouTubers again. Um, and um, I, I think that it should be a kick-off session for the greater network that, sh that should start somewhere here. Probably there are already networks of uh, foreign, uh, foreign inventors and scientists uh, who are living residing in Poland, but uh, right now it's a good moment to give this sign that Poland is very welcoming for everybody who is willing to make, make practical use from the uh, research they made in Poland, in other countries, and that Poland could be and should be maybe like the um, word in our, in our brand, a hub for people who want to meet, who want to meet uh, uh, other colleagues from the industry, from the academy, from venture capital. So, um, closing this um, opening remarks on behalf of Marek Bożestowski, uh, I want to uh, again make a very uh, strong, uh, give a very strong uh, thanks to, to Foundation for Polish Science for making it happen. And so we see the role of the foundation as a uh, really the, the gravity center of this network. Thank you very much and have a lovely session, lots of interesting questions and disruptive ideas. Yes, I, I wish Marek Bożesowski was here because he has a very good uh, name for um, training Polish pronunciation. Um, so uh, now I would like to, to invite our panelists and uh, Marta Łazarowicz. So. <laughs>
So uh, my name is Marta Lazarovic. I'm responsible for the evaluation of uh, the foundation's programs. And I would like to tell you a little bit about the international dimension of the foundation's activity from, from evaluation perspective. So the first general thing is uh, what we mean by Polish science. We are the foundation for Polish science. Uh, but that does not mean that we see something we call Polish science as something different from global science. That means that we support mostly research. <laughs> we concentrate on research done in Poland, but we want definitely to see it as a part of, of international and global science. So that means that we concentrate on researchers who have that kind of aspirations to conduct world class research and uh, we are trying to provide them with with the right conditions conditions which would enable them to have success international success now the motto of the, the motto of the foundation you, is probably known to you it's supporting the best so they can become even better and uh, when we talk about this international dimension uh, i would like to tell you about uh, how we support uh, researchers' mobility, because this is the first and most uh, important aspect, I think. Uh, then cooperation with foreign and international institutions and uh, programs uh, open to foreign researchers, plus, very important, uh, international peer review. So starting with mobility. Uh, as prof as, as, as uh, uh, as you as you already know, we started with supporting uh, outward uh, mobility of Polish researchers. One of the first programs of the foundation was called Column Program. It was aimed at sending young PhDs to the young doctoral uh, to the uh, postdoctoral internship in. Uh, the world's leading institutions. That was one of the very uh, first program of the foundation. You prob maybe not of you realize, especially people who are not Polish, may not realize that at that time, this kind of experience was not a standard in Polish uh, career model. So, in those years. 1995, between those years and 2011, many things has changed, especially when Poland joined the European Union and um, researchers started to, uh, mobility start, uh, became much easier for researchers and other uh, professions. So um, in 2011, it was decided that actually there are so many other mechanisms for supporting outward mobility that we may concentrate on other aspects of mobility. And we decided to concentrate on returns. And that's in an interesting uh, shift, because first, the homing program, w which was aimed at encouraging young Polish researchers to come back to Poland, uh, um, was introduced. And as you can see, the, the, address, it, the program was, was addressed to Polish researchers. Then, a couple of years ago, the, there was the important shift and the program was uh, opened to uh, all researchers, regardless of their nationality, of their origins. And now uh, we invite all researchers who are willing to conduct the research in Poland. So, um, talking about programs uh, attracting researchers, foreign researchers to Poland, uh, I would like to mention one of, the, again, the first initiatives of the foundation, the scholarships for foreign scholars for research in Poland. That was one of the first programs, as you can see, started in 1994. Uh, it offered actually relatively short scholarships uh, to researchers mostly from Central and Eastern Europe and Asia. Those were short stays, but the number of, of laureates is, is, is very high for foundation standards. 
So then the Homing Plus program was introduced, which I already talked about, and Welcome program, which uh, uh, was dedicated to attracting outstanding international scholars to, come to Poland. Another initiative, international doctoral projects, scholarships and grants for doctoral students, and ideas for Poland program for ERC starting grants recipients who are willing to, to conduct the research in Poland. Uh, apart from the programs which are dedicated to attracting dire directly uh, foreign researchers uh, to Poland, uh, the important change I think happened in all the foundations programs which are now generally opened to foreign researchers. I mean all basically all programs of the foundations are open to researchers regardless of their origins. What is also important is that um, the laureates of the foundations programs are obliged to recruit internationally. The adverts uh, are, have to be placed in international media, so uh, um, it is a big change. The foundation actually is quite actively involved in the recruitment uh, procedures of the teams we, we are funding. Another aspect is application of evalua assessment, evaluation, peer review, basically, of, of applications. Uh, we, for I think in, in the recent years, we've, we have done a considerable effort in order to increase the number of reviewers and in, uh, especially the number of international reviewers. So now, in uh, the last year, about 40% of FNP reviewers are foreign researchers, which is mm, done mostly to avoid conflict of interest but also to have this international uh, perspective in, uh, in assessing research we, we want to fund. And then another uh, significant initiative, I don't know whether you are familiar with the European Charter for Researchers and Code, of co for content for the recruitment of researchers, but we are actually the first institution in Poland which was recognized by the European Commission as an institution implementing the principles. There are lots of the principles, but they are basically about transparency, about fairness, about mobility, about ethics in science. And those are rules which were set by the Commission with the thought of creating an attractive research environment in Europe. And this is how we understand it in Polish context. Now, <laughs> when it comes to numbers, those are not great numbers, as you can see. Those are, we have 24 foreign laureates. Uh, recruited foreign researchers are about, well, almost 200. Those are not big numbers, especially considering the size of Poland as a country. Then, um, the foundation is not a very big institution, so we, we have generally low numbers of laureates, but again, uh, foreign laureates, as I counted it, constitute about 2% uh, of our laureates in the recent years, and re recruited foreign re researchers constitute about 7%, so this is not much. Uh, as you can see, the researchers come mostly from EU countries taken as a whole, but then, as in, in terms of single country of origin, they come from India, from, from China, from Russia, from Iran, and Ukraine. Those are the, the countries from which the, the, those researchers, especially for recruited researchers, come from. And then foreign partners. It's important that we oblige our laureates to create partnerships with international foreign researchers. So those are the number of foreign researchers who cooperate with the teams we, we found. Uh, the cooperation... The cooperation uh, is... Uh, something changed. Back. OK. 
Okay. So uh, we also um, are we are also involved in a direct uh, cooperation with other well, with international and foreign institutions uh like um the Humboldt Foundation, like DFG, like Triple AS. Those are programs which aim at mm, um award uh, awarding scientists who are particularly successful in cooperation with uh foreign partners from those particular countries. Then another thing is the foundation is a mem member of global Research Council, which also mm, is a step towards implementing standards, international good standards for doing research in Poland and evaluating research in Poland. Now I'm coming actually to the crucial part <laughs> of my uh, my uh, my uh, presentation, which is, but it's not going to be very long. Uh, when I'm talking about the numbers of foreign researchers, it's obviously not to boast about them because they are small, but we see them as the first step and an effort and a challenge actually to make the environment, scientific environment in Poland more international. The truth is that we have very low number of international researchers and students in Poland and in this situation, it's not easy to attract other foreign researchers. When we have a program, for example, international PhD programs, projects, uh, and we talked with the, with the student, PhD students who come here, they sometimes are surprised that uh, when they come to Poland to see that it's not as international uh, as they supposed it to be, because it's generally Poles around, which means, um, that we need to have a certain critical mass to attract more international rese foreign researchers. The thing is, uh, mostly people mostly talk about and complain about is the language barriers. That even if they come to teams which are, mm, w w which consist of people who speak English, the administration, uh, the institutions <laughs> in the institutions do not speak English. They have major problems arranging the basic things around them. Uh, but it's not only that. They, they Sometimes they say they feel a bit alienated in their teams because even if people do speak English, they usually speak Polish because they are just used to being among other Poles, so they are not used to speaking English. The only foreign person in institution do feel alienated. Uh, another thing is mm, mm, working conditions. Uh, and we used to think of uh, Poland as a place where we have lots of talented, wonderful scientists, but who just don't have enough money to do the proper research. But as we uh, as we ask researchers, uh, researchers working abroad, abroad, whether they would be willing to come to Poland, and what uh, what would be the uh, main obstacle. Uh, how they see Poland as a place to conduct their research, they are complaining not, um, they are afraid maybe not uh, not so much of less money, but uh, of less visibility, less prestige, uh, the, the culture of the organization of, of, of scientific work. So those are issues we have to, to keep in mind and to work on. It's not only about providing money, but to about the cultural change, actually. And uh, I, I, I believe that uh, about it's about enhancing the visibility of Polish research, because it's, this is what makes people afraid of coming to Poland, of re the researchers afraid of coming to Poland. Sometimes they worry that time spent here may not bring them uh, publications and prestige they would gain, they could gain in other places. Uh, so I, uh, as I said, I see it as a, as a challenge and the need to create a certain critical mass. I must say that when we talk with our researchers who were obliged by the Foundation's rules 
to recruit internationally. Sometimes, well, very often they said that that was the first experience of that kind, that Polish institutions are notorious for employing their own PhD students, uh, that people are used to employing other the, the students or other people they, they know personally. So the experience of open recruitment of, of, of calls advertised in other countries and this long distance recruitment process was a very new experience and people were afraid of it very often. Now I can see uh, that they have, they, they gained very positive experiences and they feel much more comfortable and as they talked a couple of years ago about it with certain apprehension, now they, they they, they are much more comfortable about it. They say, well, yes, I found this wonderful person, that other wonderful person who's really an asset to my team, so uh, um, yeah, I will do it again. I, I feel it's a good idea to advertise internationally and look for foreign, uh, foreign students, people whom I never met before, and uh, they mm, also learn ways how to, how to recruit those people, how to verify their experience, their quality. So the other, um, so I think we we are all learning. That that was that's what I wanted to say. So what are the assets we we have in mind? Is is mostly it's career opportunities. If Poland is seen sometimes as a place, well, not sometimes, as Poland is seen as a place which is less competitive internationally. That also means like the other side of the coin, that it's sometimes just easier to um, to develop your career here because there is less competition. Uh, the other thing is uh, creation new international research institutions, which I believe uh, my colleague will talk about later. So it's the idea of having new institutions which would cr attract all sorts of people from all sorts of places and would be truly international. Then uh, what's changing is increasing number of foreign researchers. This is what I mean by, by the meaning of critical mass. As there's no, non, when there's no foreign researchers, it's very difficult to attract new ones. But when there are some already, it's much easier. The environment is changed. The, sum, the same applies uh, to an increasing number of researchers with international experience. I mean, Polish researchers who worked abroad, has this experience and come back to Poland. They are actually a very significant agent of change, as we can see. They really do influence um, the environment, the institutions. The, the, the teams and institutions in Poland are changing under influence of the people who come to Poland with the foreign, uh, the, with the experiences gained abroad, which is very important he, he, here, I think. And then, good financial conditions. This is one of the big benefits we 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 draw from European structural funds that uh, we were able for the last couple of years to provide our laureates and beneficiaries with mm, quite decent support, I think, financial support, and not only support, uh, financial support actually, because we were thinking about other initiatives which were aimed at enhancing their soft skills and other sorts of skills helpful to find their way in science. I'm <laughs> managed to do it in time. <laughs> Almost? It was longer? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure it was so fast. Anyway, I would <laughs> like to introduce the panelists now. And um, and uh, that will be Professor Agnieszka Hacińska, who is the laureate uh, uh, of the Welcome Program. Uh, Dr. Olga Shehostova, who is laureate of the POMOST program. Uh, Professor Maćkowski, who is also laureate of the Welcome program. And Dr. Fernandez, who is the laureate of, 
Laureate of Homing Plus program. Okay, uh, my name is Sebastian Makowski and uh, first of all I would like to welcome you here at this meeting and thank all the previous speakers that they extended their uh, presentations because right now I don't have the problem how to start it so I can start it good, good afternoon and five to noon I wouldn't have problem uh, to solve this issue. So uh, yeah, I was asked to chair this session on Polish survival which I think is still quite optimistic phrase, to be honest. Uh, and th this is devoted to the struggles and maybe also opportunities that are associated with starting research in Poland, not only by foreigners, but also by people that spent significant amount of time abroad and then decided uh, to move here and try to do something completely against the logic. Uh, good. So, I think that I, I, it would be a waste of time to introduce myself, but I would like to ask all the panelists to briefly introduce themselves, so uh, kind of say a little bit about their, where they are carrying their work and what is briefly uh, the focus, the research focus, and then we will start to uh, discuss the issues that are in the focus of, uh, of the session. So, please. Let me start first. My name is Agnieszka Haczynska and I'm a molecular cell biologist, biologist working in the International Institute of Molecular and Cell Biology in Warsaw and I'm Polish and I graduated at the university here and did my PhD here in Warsaw but then later on I moved to Germany to undertake my postdoc and after my postdoc I also stayed there and w I was a group leader at the German University. So altogether I spent nine years abroad in Germany and since five and a half years I'm, yes, I'm, uh, I'm here in the International Institute. Good morning, so my name is Humberto Fernandes. I'm from Portugal, graduating in Portugal and then came, uh, it's my second time in Poland. So I came the first time end of 2004 to do my PhD that I did. So Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, to do my PhD that I did in Poznan. So I spent there uh, four years and two months, I think. And then I went abroad for two uh, postdocs and then came back to Poland at the uh, end of 2013. Thank you. Okay, hello. My name is Olga. Uh, I'm Ukrainian. Then I graduated in Ukraine, in Kharkov. Well, also I made uh, my PhD thesis. After that, uh, I had uh, a foreign postdoc at Frascati, Italy, and as well the Marie Curie Fellowship in Valencia, Spain. Now I'm working in Krakow uh, Institute of Nuclear Physics, and it's already said that I'm working f a bit for nuclear physics. So I'm doing phenomenology, mainly Mosca Monte Carlo generator for, uh, for Bele. Okay, so the, the, the next natural question is really, why did you decide to come to Poland? Yeah. Uh, okay, let me start with this. Uh, I already had a collaborator at that moment from the Krakow Institute, uh, and as you know, say, in Europe, after the certain years, it's, uh, it's not so easy to find uh, more or less permanent place. I mean permanent even five, ten years. You can find probably two year project, but after two years uh, it started to be a problem. And uh, Poland fortunately could propose uh, some this kind of the project, uh, project. Sometimes certainly with low salary, but it's already attractive. Even what is really good in Poland is that having a low salary like a base, you can try to apply it for other projects. You can try to apply it for fellowships. And say now in our institute, just only in our group, 
there are uh, four foreigners, three of them from so-called high uh, from developed country, it's Netherlands, and two of them from Italy. It means that Poland it's, uh, starts to be attractive uh, for Europeans. Then uh, for me, as I say, the first reason was that uh, I really had a collaborators, a professor from this institute. And second, really, it was a perspective for the permanent position. Okay, so in my case, I have actually two answers. So the first <laughs> time was uh, uh, I try first to, to get a PhD position in Portugal that I fail. And uh, then I knew that I wanted to do structural biology, so I started to look uh, elsewhere. And uh, I did apply for a few places and then end up to be Poland, thankfully. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> and uh, so for the second time, then as I say, I went abroad, but then uh, I met my girlfriend on the first time that I was here. And uh, we tried to find a position in the same place together, and we failed several times, and then it ended up to be Warsaw. So she got the job first, and then I tried to come here. So for me, this is a little bit more, uh, I would say, natural. I mean, when, when I was in Freiburg and uh, as a group leader, I started to think uh, to, 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 uh, to, to proceed further with my career. And then being Polish and being educated here in Poland, of course, I was thinking also about Poland. But definitely, so that was a really lucky coincidence at that time because I really was not about, not thinking too much about permanent positions, I was really worrying about whether I will be able to keep the level of science I would like to. But luckily, I ended up in the institution that is, that, that is a very nice and good institution. I also got this, I mean, that was the time that foundation was starting with the team and welcome programs. And these programs, this, uh, the entire situation uh, was, uh, was, was, was that, that I decided that this is a good time to come back to Poland because I, I the, the, there will be no bigger problems with organization and money because of the institution I was coming that offered me a position and because of the welcome program from the foundation. So I was very specifically looking, worrying about the, the quality of my research here and, uh, and uh, because of lucky coincidence, I decided that I would like to try. Mm -hmm. I understand. So... Uh I am, uh, as far as I can t uh, tell, you are coming from slightly different. Pr you, you are not the group with the group leaders, n so you are working in. Uh, uh, so at the moment, uh, I'm uh, with a postdoc. A postdoc, position. yeah, you're mm -hmm. a postdoc position. Yeah. And so, so how do you like, sort of, the climate or the landscape of doing research in Poland in in this kind of level? Because I sort of know how, how it feels when you are a group leader. But I, I would really like to see the perspective of a postdoc or a PhD student. We don't have PhD students here, but uh, okay. uh, so because you also have experience from other places. So, uh, so as, as I say, it was uh, is my second time, so I knew to what I was coming. So nothing, I was not caught by surprise. But still, uh, I must admit that that is some challenge it's that uh, end up to be a bit more difficult. So uh, as a PhD student, you are kind of. Uh, you don't realize, but you are protected in a way. You have someone to do the small bits for you that at the moment you don't realize. And then, you, not as a group leader, uh, I believe uh, other challenges will come, but uh, it's still the, the small bits that need to be you to fix, and uh, that has a bit. And uh, as uh, was said before, one of the barriers in that case is the language. Even if people speak to you in English, it's still not a natural language for them. And but I don't think this is very typical to Poland. Because when I was in Munich and we had 10 German students and three foreigners, uh, there was this first 10 minutes when everybody was speaking English, but after this 10 minutes, they switched to German and nobody followed what they were talking about. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, th this is not particularly Polish specifics. Yeah, uh, that is true, but uh, if I may add, so uh, another lucky chance in my case is that the two postdocs that I did, I did in English-speaking countries, so <laughs> <laughs> when, even when they switched the language was mm -hmm. something that I could understand. I think a little bit about this language, I think we come to the, to the issue that has been raised at the beginning that this is this critical mass, because I know I was also in Germany, and, um, 
And uh, in, our in our laboratory, was at the certain stage, was more or less half of us were foreigners. So in principle, at the beginning, I remember situations, as you just, just said, but later on, these foreigners just continue, were continuing speaking English. And then the Germans were again joining to these conversations and these, these kind of social groups. So, you know, that was the question of the amount of the foreigners, very clearly that have changed the attitude uh, and uh, that, yes, I agree that this was, this is not only Polish problem and, uh, and exactly it's very important to have more international people here. Mm -hmm. And how it is in your case? Um, you because you said I that you have more international environment. Yes, um, so I could say only one thing that uh, from my experience, Polish administration is much better than in Italy and Spain. That is the first point. <laughs> <laughs> Almost on all levels, starting from the foreign departments in the city place, saying. Uh, organization of documents and all the things. Uh, it's a big mystery that uh, really uh, this administration, city administration is able to speak English and they speak not bad than certainly in the institute, the secret, our secretary, they speak English and they try to help with missions, with all the things. Yeah, this part is done in Polish, but really secretary I can't say about all institutions in Poland, but at least in our institute, they are very friendly, and they, especially at the beginning, try to help with words. Even for me, who could understand some Polish words uh, comparing with Ukrainian, to write in Polish, it's impossible at all. Then, and maybe, as now there are some this internet technology, it would be not so bad that uh, in some period, some time, either this uh, FNP on other research activity could propose some case like a Polish language course, at least through YouTube or through, uh, but uh, really like uh, organized things. But when, we, when you know that there is in Skype at that time, there is Polish language course. I'm, I don't know, as other research here, foreign research, but I'm sometimes very lazy to go somewhere in the city and to take this course. If I know that there is something proposed by the organization, it's already much better, say, at least for me. I can open, even at the same lunch time, I can open Skype, I can open YouTube and follow this course. It will be, according to me, not so bad to get uh, this short course, but um, at least convenient for everyday practice. So, for instance, at the university that I'm working on, we have a special uh, course for foreigners. We don't have too, too many foreigners, but we have a special course of, of Polish language for, for the foreign students, which I think will come in numbers in, in, in coming years because there is no really other option. But that's the comment on the side. And looking at the perspective from the, from the perspective of the group leader, have you had foreigners in your in your group during this welcome project or yes yes the, we we still have foreigners in our group and and we, yeah so we have a all together i think it was uh, and together with the people who are there about five to six people are they happy outside. uh i you know it's <laughs> not that i maybe i should ask this question question to them actually but I, I think with the, you know, with the, uh, I would like, I mean, the administration, the support in, in that is done in, in English by administration is very important. We have it. Another thing that is very important, uh, uh, so we are a little bit discussed about social, social kind of discussions or scientific social discussions, but, but completely scientific uh, conversations, for example, like, like institu institutional seminars. We also have it in English which is not the case for really very premier, many very premier institutions at the campus Ohota. Mm -hmm. to, to, and I think this is, this is really actually very critical to, to, uh, to have it, uh, to have the inst inst seminars with the, with the guests invited uh, who can speak Polish, but they can also speak English, of course, and the seminars should be in English. So I think altogether, we have the, because our, our institute is also in the name has this international, we really put a lot of effort at least to, to, uh, to secure this administration help and the scientific discussion and messages to be all, to be all in English. So, so yeah, the social part is a, 
it's a different so, so issue. If I may ask one more question, which just arise, because has anybody left your group being a foreigner and where he end up? Because because I, I had two mm -hmm. two postdocs mm -hmm. and they are still continuing. So it means that the fact that they stayed mm -hmm. in Poland for two years didn't close the door to, to, to the career mm -hmm. and actually they kind of developing from what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would like to learn a little bit more statistics about it because I have just two. So I think in the it's 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 right now it's hard for me for definitely the person who left uh, already some time ago and this was the first year when I was here it was a, a master student from Spain and she did uh, indeed she she got relatively into very nice PhD program in Spain um, and after being unsuccessful in UK <laughs> for two times uh, so that's the and the other other uh, foreigners are still in the group and I'm really looking forward uh, to, to the next ne I mean in the future you know for the but I think they will be they will be uh, quite successful I believe okay so we put a lot of sugar so far <laughs> so let, 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 let's now put a little bit of <laughs> into it. Of course, you don't understand what it is, but that's the substance that makes the sugar not sugar anymore. So it tastes a little uh, bitter. Yeah. So I if you were to look back this two or three years, uh, what would you name as a major issues, problems, obstacles, uh, things that surprised you in a negative way, more or less? Are there any? So in my case, as I say, I think I was aware of them. So I... Uh, <laughs> what were there? <laughs> Maybe, uh, so administrative w will be the, the top. No, not only at work, but also resident permits and all these kind of things. If you plan to buy a car or whatever. It's, it's small things, but all built up mm -hmm. to, to get complicated. I understand that the problems for the PI and for the postdocs will be different because the coupling with administration is at the different level. So you're enjoying your stay then here, yeah? Really? Oh, surprise. <laughs> How about the, the leader, the group leader? What surprised you the most? Uh, what surprised me the most? I mean, it's not that many things surprised me really a lot, but I mean, we have to remember that I was for majority of my life here in Poland. But after these nine years of Germany, uh, in Germany, in a, rel in a very good place and very well organized, I really, so I have no problem with the contact with administration or, you know, leaving. This is obvious, I speak Polish. So, but of course, what, what surprised me, didn't surprise me, but still, kind of was uh, was uh, uh, was was uh, something that i maybe did not expect fully is still some lack of really or so i was used to better organization in germany in principle several things they were just better organized people people knew you know what they should do uh, within the tasks of work and they they did it and they did it efficiently and here I, I found it that it's uh, a little bit you know uh, less focused I can see that Warsaw and Krakow are just the exceptions because I'm traveling around meeting with people from Gdańsk, Toruń, uh, Wrocław and other places and the level of frustration also from people that where laureates of welcome projects and, and the like is kind of uh, going up uh, to the level that they are thinking about returning to the places from which they arrived here to do research. So it's really kind of, it would be really depressing. And, and I, I, I know that International Institute is really the place to be if you are doing biology, but uh, if you work at the university, then I think the perspective is different. So maybe you can see the, for example, I, I'm asking the, the, the young people here, the young researchers. So uh, what is your plan? How you see yourself in like three years? Will you apply for a project or you will rely on your leader or, or would you like to stay here in Poland or? 
Uh, let me first say it about the, my frustration about uh, I'm here from the 1st January 2013. And my frustration really at that moment was salary. Uh, with that salary, it was impossible. Okay, it was possible to survive at that moment uh, of that academic salary, but it was impossible to say to maintain at that moment my daughter here. She had three years at that moment, and unfortunately, I was obliged to send her to my mother to Ukraine. I lived without her for half a year. It was really a very big frustration. Then, uh, fortunately, I won this, uh, uh, this project. It helped me really enough because the salary increased twice. Also, what really it allowed me, it allowed me to, uh, to attend the conference because as with, the, uh, with the salary at that moment uh, and without really any grant, you can't uh, attend any conference. And if you don't attend the conference, it means that uh, people, maybe they knew you before, they could know you for half a year, for two years, but then they will forget about your work, they will forget about all the things. You can publish papers, everything, but if you don't present these papers, if you don't present the results, mm, it's not very good for the career. That's why at that moment it was frustration. Fortunately, for the moment, uh, the salary is increasing. Fortunately, it's increased about 45%. It's already very big, uh, say, positive things at, uh, from this side. Then about the perspective of career. You see, uh, I am already have more than 35 years. That's why from that is what I see here, many programs are devoted uh, only for the really young uh, researchers, for the researchers that, has, uh, that have less than 35 years. That's why, say, it's not so easy to find, I think, the project who are devoted to, say, some intermediate level. When you are not ready really to take responsibility for a big group, you are ready to get one or two probably master's student or PhD students. At that is, I could say, like, uh, for, the, for, the mo for, a mo for the moment, for me, a negative uh, point. I have this foremost uh, grant, uh, and I have a very small group. I, have, uh, I had one PhD student who, unfortunately, left, or maybe he will leave uh, physics uh, after his PhD thesis. And I have one master's student for the moment. And say I would like, if it's possible, also to find another project that allows me to start uh, to get a bit bigger group, but not like 20 people. I don't really feel uh, already uh, ready, say, to really to propose uh, for 20 people some tasks and to follow them, because a leader means really a very big responsibility for these things. And I don't feel it. Like that's why for something like intermediate level, for the moment, I really couldn't find uh, some projects that could give me this possibility. N not with the foundation, but there are other uh, agencies. Okay, for other agencies, yes, but you know, also for other agencies, there are very strong restrictions. There are restrictions for the mo f uh, say seven years after PhD, and unfortunately, I was uh, I made my P PhD at the age of 25. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I already <laughs> say uh, seven years. It means 32, and in the age of 32. Maybe there are some people who are really ready to be responsible for 20 people, but I don't know whether it's, uh, they really have re experience to propose tasks to follow these people. Because master students, you should be responsible for this person at least for five years. If he, he she is going to continue this career, you should propose the task, you should understand, you should really teach this person. And uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but okay, I, if we forget about foundation for a minute, and and you realize that foundation is non-existent, and then you have to apply for a project to National Science Center, and then you have to write five pages of uh, short project description in Polish. Yes, it's a problem. I already tried to do it last year, 
and it was, uh, you know, okay, you can try to use Google translation, but that is what you get at the end. It will be very funny things. It will be just only cartoons, or it will be something. I don't know what. It will be not uh, physical text. Yes, it's one of the main problems. Also for habilitation thesis. Now a requirement for habilitation thesis. You should write not only in English, you should write also in Polish. And I know that, say, not only for me, but also for my colleagues, especially, I know some pe people from Spain and from Italy, it's a problem for them, even when they speak Polish. But then to put this text all together, formula, certainly they try to put as much as possible formula, just only to get this context. But you understand that really, sometimes with uh, this transcription, with everything, everything, you have this problem. And Polish is not so easy a language to, for reading, say, like that. And how about you? So it's a bit on the same way. So uh, one of the biggest frustrations is that you see your project finishing, and what about continuation? So uh, I would like to stay. Yes. And uh, now I'm facing the same problem. So applying for a different uh, grant scheme mm -hmm. and having these five pages in Polish that you, you still, it's more than double the work. So you need to do it, the things in English, and then you need to ask someone to help you with the translation. Is there anybody you can ask in administration, for instance, that will help you? Uh, no, not really. So, I have so we are home. touching the problems now. <laughs> I knew I'm good at it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do have help at home, but indeed not. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, not <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. So uh, fr from, what, from what I've already heard, there, are, th there is room for improvement and, and, and there is a lot of, really there is a lot of things that can be done. Uh, so, okay. so how does it look from the perspective of the leader? How large is your group? My group is about uh, 13, 14 people. Do you feel tr frustration when one project ends and you have to support your group? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think, th so the frustration about the scientific project do I feel or whether I have to... I don't really feel this frustration. I feel frustration, I feel different kinds of frustration, again, based rather on organizations and kind of, you know, limits that I cannot simply change. Name the it. Things I can Name I, it. They, they, yes, these are just, you know, things that I cannot really change. There are several of them, but, <laughs> but uh, nevertheless with the, but I mean, this is the perspective, so this, this frustrates me. I mean, I cannot change the, organization of the system. I mean, looking at this NCN grants, NCN such a nice institution, but people who will be, who will be applying for the grants at the NCN will have to write these five pages in Polish, so it means that I will probably do this for them fully, right? So that's <laughs> the, I mean, these kind of things. But, uh, but I mean, yes, this frustrates me. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, are there any questions fro from the audience? Because I asked the organizers of this session whether it's allowed for the audience to ask questions. And if there are any, then please. Right. Um, hello, my name is Jakub Bochiński. I'm a postdoctoral student at the Open University in Britain, but I'm also Polish myself. So I had a quick question because I had some experience giving seminars in Poland. So I wanted to ask you both as foreigners and Polish people, what is your experience with attending meetings in Poland, and I kind of think of larger meetings. One thing as a foreigner, are you able to actually follow what's happening in larger meetings, and do people sometimes switch to English, for example, because you are in, in the audience? And to Polish people, uh, do you actually see any systems or anything put in place to make sure that if you have postdoctoral researchers, for example, in the audience, that the language will be adjusted to, even if you have 300 people in the audience, to non-Polish speaking people, that the audience, that the whole thing will be happening in English or anything of that sort. Thank you. Anybody would like to answer? So uh, I, I don't think there's really that, that effort to, to see if it is one person not really fully understanding. And in my case, so uh, I've been so many years that I kind of follow, but no, not completely. So it's, uh, you, you need to be. Uh, first, you need to be very interested in the topic to, to really follow, because if, uh, not saying that there's, uh, maybe rephrasing, so even if the topic is interesting, if you don't have the background, you lose it quite fast. And then uh, even with your best intentions, you, you really cannot catch up at the end. So that, that is a difficulty indeed. 
And I think our goal for the future would be to have all the meetings and discussions in English and not that, that the foreigners who come to Poland will need to learn Polish, even the scientific language, to participate in the conferences. That, that would be the goal. And uh, I can only tell, tell that, that um, uh, when I came here uh, in 2009 to Poland, and I was, uh, I think that was uh, every two years we have these big biochemistry meetings in Poland. So at the beginning they were in Polish, although some of the speakers were, in, were foreigners invited to come to these meetings. So only for these foreigners, of course, then the foreigner was, was speaking in English, the rest was in Polish. This has changed. So the, the, the last, uh, last uh, big meetings of the uh, Polish Biochemical Society were actually <coughs> happening in, in, uh, in English, but I, I really, really see very big problem. This is what I was raising earlier, that even in many places, still the, 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 the lectures or the scientific talks are in Polish, and I mean myself, I usually just, just take every opportunity I can to switch immediately to English. There is also another view uh, of this issue, because at the end of the day, the PhD student is supposed to write her or his thesis, and I'd rather have them writing it in Polish, and I'd rather have them this thesis being written in a good Polish language. So there is another trend which I strongly support, which is to organize Polish conferences. There is Polish Optical Conference, there is Polish Conference on Nanotechnology. There are some other conferences where the focus and the accent is put to have the conferences in Polish so that the young people will learn how to speak about science in their own language. So there is another story. Although I agree that if you have foreigners in the audience, and I experienced that not later than November last year, when suddenly it appeared that on the seminar I was given there will be two foreigners in, in the crowd of 150 or so, and then in five minutes I decided that I will give this talk in English. For me that was not a problem. If there were a PhD student or, or a master's student, uh, then this can also be an issue because their language skill is not at the level that they can switch so sort of fluently between one and the other uh, and try to be comfortable with it. So um, there is always another side of the coin. So, 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 so you, you, you don't want to uh, throw out the child with the bath. There has to be a balance. If there is uh, a seminar and there are foreigners there, then I think at least the slides have to be in English, uh, regardless of who is speaking, whether this is master student or PhD student. But uh, on the other hand, there are groups at my university who really force uh, students to, to, to speak in English, and sometimes the result is really devastating. So, so, so I. Uh, there is always a balance, so I, I, I don't want to vote for one or the other, but uh, I think that balance is the key word here. And, uh, can I ask how many uh, subjects on your faculties you have uh, with your students in English? Because I think that the, the majority, the general obstacle is that in master program or bachelor programs, we don't learn people how to um, how to learn in English, how to discuss about their subjects or about what they are interested in in English. And that's the majority obstacle. I have one subject in English with my students, which is uh, it's humanistics, uh, it's journalism faculty. And they do whatever is possible not to have classes in English because they didn't have it in the past and they are so afraid to use, they, they don't, they don't know even basically words about media or about journalism, so they are not able to discuss. And this is the problem, that we don't um, learn young people how to, how to learn in English and how to discuss about their subject in English. I don't know if you agree with me. There is, there is again, I, I don't think that you are from the universities, so I should, I should answer this question. First of all, if the course is in English, then it counts twice in, in, in hours. Uh, 
the faculty doesn't like it because they want to decrease the number of hours. So, so th th that's the one ob obstacle. Uh, on the other hand, I visited recently my colleague in Gdańsk at, at the Technical University there, and he started a course with full support from his department where they were just reading the papers in English, the research papers in English. And, I, and he said that he started it for his own group, five people, seven people, and then other students were coming, were coming, were coming, and the room had to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, and they had a lot of fun uh, doing this. And I think this is a great idea that you don't only teach people language as it is, because from my own experience, you don't learn language unless you land in Cincinnati, Ohio, and try to get through the custom, but, uh, and try to understand what this guy is, is telling you, uh, and respond intelligently. But uh, you have to teach people how to read scientific, regardless of the discipline, scientific papers, and uh, how to make the right structure, and then th they will be prepared. I think, in a way, to, to, to do it on your own. So, but, but, but the problem in, in English courses is, is always double. First of all, people don't uh, have the competence to really teach in English, because it's not that you will be just speaking English, um, but, but it, it's really the flow and, and kind of methodology that you have to implement, which is different. But, but also, they don't, the how the authorities don't like it really because then they have to have a lot of over hours and and the, 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 this is the, the this is the problem at the university especially at physics faculty where we have only five students or so okay are there any f questions Right, so another quick question I had was about the support systems. One thing we, I'm, I work a little bit with Professor Bunitsky, who keeps rallying about a support system in uh, Polish institutions regarding grant support writing and et cetera. So uh, again, I want just to ask you quickly, how, how do you find, I, I know you've already complained about it a little bit, so I want to ask you about how do you find a support system. I work at a, at a British institution where most of the administrational work related to my research is being done by well, administrational stuff, where I do research, which is what I'm hired to do. I've heard from my colleagues in Poland quite often that this is not always the case in here. So I just wanted to ask you, you were asking about uh, gripes with the Polish system. So I just wanted to ask you, how, how painful is it? is it? Is it really that much of a problem, or, or is it just a hype, or maybe going a little bit too far in complaining about it? Would you like to comment on it? Okay, let me say that in writing uh, of project for this FNP, and last year I tried to write it for the National Science, uh, really in writing project I couldn't find any support. Now in doing, uh, say, report uh, this for any report period, uh, I really don't have any problem with administration. Let me say like that. Uh, in report, during report period, yes, but uh, during application, I was alone, really alone, say. So in my case, I think the experience is exactly the same. So for the reporting, yes, but uh, on the application, not. Yeah, but on the other hand, if you write the project to National Science Center, there is no administration involved, essentially. You just write one page in Polish of, of, of short project description, five page, another one. And then 15 pages in, in English, yeah? I mean... Uh, yeah, you Unfortunately, in Polish, it's five pages about science, and then it starts to be why it's important, why it's only Poland, and all the things. And really, sometimes it's not so easy to answer, especially when you have uh, this uh, review and they you say something like why you choose Poland you can go to another country and you don't know really what to answer to this project and uh, really and uh, I don't know this I is real this is real or yes it's real also it's real especially about the budget I could say last year experience it was like this I don't know I 
um, for NSN, I tried to apply it, and I put for me 500 slotes less than for my uh, postdoc, I tried to apply it. Because I calculated my salary and plus an additional this budget, and the answer was negative. They put me zero points exactly for budget, and they rejected this project only for this part. And the exp explanation was like this, it's not clear why the leader project would like to put for herself less the money than postdoc. And immediately they put for this zero, and as, soon as it was zero for one point, the project was rejected. Yeah, I, I experienced that as well. You understand? So and I it, understand that very well. And if probably they could put it at the beginning that the salary of leader project should be not less of postdoc, then I would do it. But I didn't know these rules. It's not written anyway. Yeah, yeah, but administration would not help you with that. <laughs> okay, be but maybe they already had that experience. No, no. And the, uh, I don't know something. If I may, still on that point, I, I think the, they could help when you are uh, filling your grant and you try to read all the rules, and then you have extensive pages that are in Polish, and you are using Google Translate that, as we discussed, is not really accurate. Exactly. And uh, it's just enough one word of a person that has experience or is reviewing 20 grants, and they know the range that people are putting and call your attention and say, this doesn't make sense and no, not mm -hmm. to, to have situations. When it's really enough, one experienced person, one minute. So, so, I, I, so this, is, this, is, this is an issue, although the NCN grants, I think they are much, they are relatively, they are relatively easy, but as you said, I mean, there are examples we even don't notice if we actually speak Polish. We don't notice these problems that come in these web pages. And budget, of course, strict regulations now in the NCN grants, which you know, pages in Polish, this is very difficult to, to, to fit. And if you don't do it correctly, you will be formally rejected. So it's, it's really important. I would, only, I would also suggest, because, you know, even if the, I've heard about uh, many institutions where the administration really does not help with these kind of things. I would, I would really suggest to make as much as possible kind of, you know, so, so kind of, you know, ask friends, ask, mo ask more experienced people who are actually really doing these grants very frequently. And to have 15 minutes discussion, this is not a problem. I mean, if somebody will ask me, help me to try to figure out how to set the budget, we will meet for half an hour and I will help. And I think you need to find also actively people who will help you with this if this is not administration. Of course, ideally this would be administration, but we know how it is and then, you know, you, you need to go to your more experienced colleagues who, who, who write these grants all the time and are quite aware of, of how to, to put the budget uh, within all these pages that you have to read. So that's, that's my suggestion for for how to, how to manage with this type of, of problems, because at the end, we also need to look for the solutions. Some of the, some of the organization and things we just simply cannot change, or that we should, but the change will come very slowly. So that's uh, the case of the National Science um, Center, which, is, as, uh, as you said, applying for grants is pretty easy. Um, how about European grants, um, ERC, or uh, setting up international collaborations and things like that? Because that's usually quite a lot of administrative work involved with things like that? There is essentially no help. There is no help, no support. If you want to apply for a project in the new call that has not been known before, then they are scary to death mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to, to really do anything new. And, and the, well, it, it's really coming to the point that university in Poland is established to teach students not to carry research, and I think a lot of hope, at least in my heart, is within establishing new institutions, because I think with these old institutions you can do only old things, and uh, with the new institutions there is at least hope that if you arrange them properly, and you don't uh, make a major, um, how you call it, failure, on the road, then you should be able to establish something along Max Planck Institute or some other uh, things like this. But at the end, uh, since we are, have to somehow summing, uh, have to sum up, if you want to buy good shoes, you will go to a friend and ask where to buy good shoes. So the question is, would you recommend your friends to come to Poland and do science? That, that, that's the question that I reserved to be asked at the 
at the end of this conversation because I ask this question myself frequently and very often I get a no Un unless we will build up a new institution. Uh, let me answer like this. I will recommend but to a person who I know. Say I and really depend very much on the supervisor. And a supervisor is very important person not only for science but also for environment. Uh, and depends on the person, really, Hans. So in my case, I think I will say yes, but to a good friend that I also could say the but and mm -hmm. then really tell what I feel in there. So I would, I also would agree that the personality and uh, matter. So you have to be brave enough also and optimistic and positive to sort of overcome all these difficulties. But I would say very important thing is really the institution and the level of science. So once this is secured, this is good. I think it's much better to fight all these things with you, which you have with administration, organization, you know, if you have good colleagues and good science around you, it's just much easier. And I think with the word fight, you really summed up the whole spirit of this conversation, which is named Polish survival. So I, I would like to thank all the panelists for their insights and for their comments uh, and for surviving in all these conditions that are surrounding us. Thank you very much and thank you all.
nothing has changed. The subject of our uh, of my speech has changed a little bit because uh, during this part of, of um, Destination Poland seminar, we want to focus much more on a financial and commercialization perspective for R&D projects and research, high-tech project, IP-intensive project, whichever description you like. You know what, what is exactly hidden um, uh, under this, this description. We are uh, an um, ecosystem, we are creating an ecosystem for four years now that is mainly uh, interested in helping driven um, and, and ambitious scientists to go outside from academia with scientific, um, scientific ideas, scientific concepts to put them into market successfully with also a potential for global expansion, which will be a subject, one of the, s one of the pillars of uh, Piotr Pietrzak's speech, who will take uh, over me after maybe 20 minutes. So my role right now, as I understand it, is to present you, mm -hmm. I know why, I will not d disturb the, the light. Um, my role here is to, disc to, to describe you, to uh, get you involved into our mission and to help you uh, understand what exactly we can be helpful in. The Startup Hub Poland Foundation uh, is a result of one long year, 2011, of preparation and thinking how, e how exactly um, inventors, investment managers, entrepreneurs, startupers can go together in order to create so so ec ecosystem or, or a group that uh, could accelerate the process of high-tech uh, science commercialization. And uh, the mission of foundation hasn't changed for the last three years after incorporation of our, of our foundation, which is again private, again heavily subsidized by government. Uh, we have one fund uh, that is called Start Venture at Poland, and it's a joint venture um, endeavor uh, made together with one major Polish VC fund, Giza Polish Venture and National Center for Research and Development, uh, which also belongs to, uh, to Piotrek part of the, of the presentation. What I want to say is uh, I started from, from the statement that the mission hasn't changed. We see Poland and, yes, Poland as this very place that should be a hub, a center, a uh, link for scientists and investors from not only Poland, but also from abroad. Uh, there are different reasons of why we think this is uh, uh, reasonable. Th the first reason, um, which is presented over here, uh, I will skip the slide and return uh, afterwards, uh, is that Poland, because of the unique situation in European Union, is heavily um, subsidized by European Union funds, f also for R&D, also for science commercialization. And in the first period of our participation in the European Union, there has been lots of uh, facilities and infrastructure built. And for sure, because I'm talking to people of science, you, everyone and each of you have experienced a unoccupied laboratory or scientific uh, facility, which is, mm, which is um, I would say, five stars for, from the global perspective, but it's not fully um, used by researchers, by students, by professors, and and maybe even technological startups. What is also important is that uh, um, we, this maybe it's an uh, maybe I shouldn't say we, but you for sure, uh, you scientists of applied sciences uh, are benefiting also from the soft startup industry because there are right now in Poland plenty of uh, endeavors projects enterprises from, for example, ICT, but not big data or Internet of Things, but more ICT-like applications for fun, for entertainment. Um, uh, lots of investors are, in the moment, interested in Poland. I talked to Eik a little bit earlier from Estonia, who is sitting on, on the end of, of, the, sal of, the, of the conference uh, assembly. Um, he told me, uh, we, we shared some information about Estonia, and I would say that uh, both countries have its own characteristic. Poland, for example, has bigger internal market. What makes lots of Estonians uh, project, or half Estonians are Polish, for example, or German, Estonian, Polish, which I also know, to start up in Poland, because uh, Poland gives them 38 million of potential customers. So on the other, uh, of the other, let's say, 
uh, element of this chain, of this se sequence, uh, there are investors who are coming to um, find attractive and uh, interesting projects. And when we are ne close to investors' interests, when they are already in Poland, uh, they are behaving quite often opportunistic. It means they are looking for uh, generally high uh, s uh, potential projects which are scalable and easy to to enlarge the scope of its activity. Uh, and then they are more and more getting interested into science. Uh, our example also again for the third time, probably the last time I will say that it's part of Piotrek presentation. He will also uh, try, to, uh, he, will, he will tell you about um, no <laughs> Uh, he will tell you about um, our portfolio, our deal flow, so you can see on examples what kind of high tech is interesting for us and why such and not other. Um, Poland also um, is a frontier country, uh, which gives lots of opportunity for colleagues uh, from Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, Moldova, Azerbaijan, Ar Armenia, Georgia, every country in Eastern uh, Europe uh, from where people uh, really believe that right now the their dreams can come true in Poland. So um, I believe Portugal, for example, I'm not sure if there is somebody from Portugal, I just need this example. Hell. Oh yeah, true, um, very short, uh, very short uh, memory, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the Portugal is a great entrepreneurial country too, also with lots of chances for R&D um, projects and high-tech projects, but from the perspective of Ukrainian scientist or postdoc or PhD student or uh, Azerbaijan student, uh, it's far easier to come to Poland. The cultural differences are, are minor. Uh, the distance itself is closer to go here from Kiev. You need only one day, not like to Lisbon. You need to take a flight or to travel like myself who is afraid of flying for two days by car. Uh, so uh, the, the geographical situation of Poland is also good. Uh, this slide also presents that the reputation of Poland is not irrelevant. Uh, from time to time, we all read um, some uh, articles in media about Polish chances, Polish opportunities, Polish successes. Of course, there's lots of uh, things to do, but still, I can admit with pleasure that Poland has a good recognition on an economical uh, level, from the economical perspective and financial perspective uh, on, um, in the eyes of uh, media and, and journalists from abroad. So it's really good moment to think about Poland as a place where we can make the first step from acadi academia into the uh, R&D market or R&D sector. I return to, to the pipe, to the uh, let's say, timeline of our existence, <coughs> uh, uh, focusing your special attention on the last uh, two um, circles of this line, which represent the number of projects that are applying to us, to, to making use of the chances that we are um, offering, and uh, financial possibilities, mentor possibilities. And uh, the last uh, circle is about Bridge Alpha program. Uh, it's, uh, as I said, joint venture program with National Center for Research and Development. And it's particularly interesting in our case because this is the only fund uh, in Poland. It will not be the only fund in next year. I know about two other initiatives that are going to launch. I'm very happy about it. We all should be happy about it because there will be more money for our uh, domain for um, high-tech commercialization. But right now we are the only fund, Star Ventures Poland is the only fund that um, fundraise for this purpose. Our plans in for the next year is to, ri to raise a more ambitious fund for five million uh, euro or five million dollars if you prefer, for exactly the same reason. We are also thinking that could be also uh, determined by the results of our conference today, maybe to specialize in one or two industries that are particularly interesting for us. Talking to industries, these are the eight that we have, um, um, let's say, promote as our main uh, focuses. Um, of course, as an opportunistic fund, we are uh, interested in projects which are also outside of these uh, eight uh, presented areas, but these eight, in our, in our opinion, for Poland are right now are the so-called, as media like to say, big thing. They really can be big, they really uh, have a uh, necessary background of very high profile scientists and specialists, also m managers. Uh, we have all, we have all um, 
uh, let's say uh, possibilities for these eight um, specializations to become our national treasure, our national, let's say, uh, PR successes, and not only, financial successes as well, and scientific successes as well. Uh, for the investor perspective, we are the um, organization that help to focus very good, high energetic and, uh, and uh, a promising pipeline. For the invest from the inventor, yes, inventor point of view, we are much more like a doorway to, to greater chances for commercialization. It needs to start very slowly. So normally people apply to us and ask if uh, we are interested in helping this or that project. First of all, we need to understand this project. As you can imagine, even a large group of analysts, uh, we are together uh, like six uh, analysts in our team, uh, even a large group of analysts will not have competences in every field of the industry. So we always uh, cooperate with ad hoc uh, experts who help us in understanding the project and evaluating its business and uh, p potential and feasibility of the project. It's also one of the points that you might find interesting because if you don't have right now project that is ready to commercialization or is doubtful, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, you are also a uh, very important network for us because we want to um, make du technological due diligence or feasibility study with people who are actually expert in this or that domain. <coughs> the money from my perspective right now uh, in our offer is the, the less important uh, part. And it's not only dedicated to uh, Startup Hub Poland or our fund Start Venture at Poland, but generally for the market. It's quite easy to find money right now. I say it with satisfaction because it used to be a problem 10 years ago. Right now, even during the last uh, panel, we talked about, uh, about uh, grants. Uh, we have good opportunities right now to, to, to apply for grants, as Kuba, for example, uh, said during his question. Yes, what, am I right? That was one of, of your claim. So the money itself is not the biggest advantage that uh, Polish market offers. Uh, I think that smart money is something that is worthy to underline. There are lots of funds, maybe I exaggerate, there are some funds in Poland which are heavily sp uh, specialized in, um, not in preparing projects to, s to launch, but much more to find a proper investor from the industry or a venture capital, international venture capital investor, investor who knows how to help the project and find together um, very good uh, uh, commercial chances. Of course, because the venture capital fund is interested in uh, proliferating um, uh, return of investment. So this is also a chance for us scientists as a way to make a really good financial success. Um, we, when we started, we were one of the, f uh, so our fund was one of the first uh, generally high-tech funds in Poland, but not the first one, of course. Uh, we thought how to make the steps from zero uh, level, so from the first date, first, meet, meet, first meeting, into the commercialization proper and understandable for scientists. Uh, how we did it? We basically checked how our colleagues from Silicon Valley or from London or from Germany or from other uh, advanced uh, high-tech uh, societies do it in their funds. And we know that this kind of, um, this kind of um, advancing in our relation with scientific uh, group is profitable because it gives us opportunity to uh, select the best projects uh, within every industry, I want to uh, I want to focus your special attention on this uh, on this uh, part, uh, the composition of the investment committee, so called, which is evaluating projects that uh, our analytical team uh, pre select uh, is very important. Why? Because we not only um, we not only select projects using our magical sense of knowing what is good and what is worthy to, to invest, but also because we are closely cooperating with a high, in, let's say, a big industry. Uh, we have Polish companies uh, and uh, outside, ou outsiders, so let's say foreign companies uh, operating in Poland, and uh, we are listening carefully to them and even feed giving feedback to scientists in our network saying, 
Guys, I know that your field of studies or your field of research is, uh, is here. If you um, find some energy within your research team to get interested more in this or that substance or this or that application, we can very well help you with some seed money and investment uh, later, A round or B round money, uh, to come to bring you closer to the industry that is ready to buy this or that solution. So talking to, um, talking to high um, um, profiled corporates from Poland is also our job. We know that not all of us, not all of us scientists, are very well prepared to understand the needs of big industry. And this, we also understand our mission here, to be the bridge between uh, big um, industry and venture capital market and uh, uh, yourself, uh, who are scientists and uh, uh, members of international research teams. Um, I'm not uh, willing to go deep into our um, pre-selection uh, process because it, it has been shortly written on the blackboard over here but what is important is that uh, we had few examples of um, let's say soft landing support very maybe not you because you have already landed if you are sitting in foundation for Polish science you have landed successfully uh, I'm not talking about airplanes which is my uh, personal uh, um, disaster topic but I'm talking about landing in more um, let's say social or comfort, uh, as far as comfort is concerned, way. What I mean is that some of your colleagues who also probably consider to come to one of European Union countries or Eastern European Union countries like Poland, Estonia, or for example, Czech Republic, might be uh, this, um, uh, might lost the orientation, where to start, uh, what exactly is interesting in this city, which research units are interesting. They have some knowledge, but some knowledge is missing. So. Uh, we also help uh, on in this field. We, uh, we s uh, spend some extra time and pay some extra energy into uh, putting people into societies or uh, groups of researchers or investors which are suitable for them. It's quite important because nobody wants to feel alien, everybody wants to feel comfortable in new environment, so um, avoiding this as or ignoring this element we would ignore the most essential element of our psychological comfort. These are, in a, in a sh short description, the stages of uh, our activities. We start with qualification, we give some feedback of how the uh, project could be um, substantially upgraded or, or changed uh, to in order to fit to, to the market needs. Uh, we make proof of principle and proof of concept uh, research uh, it's one of our main goal because the fund uh, that is the main um, mm, main hero, main character, main protagonist of the second speech today of Startup Hub Poland uh, is pre-incubation. Uh, later stage of commercialization, it's maybe not um, um, a lovely uh, topic for this very presentation because um, it comes up usually in high-tech uh, industries after a few years, especially when you have FDA procedures, for example, or lots of clinical tests to, to be performed. So maybe let's not uh, put too much attention on this one. But what I want to uh, show you is that, that very briefly, because it's not my field right now, is to show you the um, average uh, money um, possibilities that we, are, uh, that we are having in our uh, repository, which is 50,000 euro for pr 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 proof of principle and seed money, which is even greater because it's like two million slot, so half a million euro for the proof of uh, concept uh, part. Uh, I want also to tell you that uh, we are closely cooperating with number of Polish uh, of Polish investors who have essential um, experience in high tech commercialization and uh, mm, which I think was one of the biggest uh, advantage of our, uh, of our ecosystem is that they are really available. They, I've, never, I've never seen them uh, totally ignoring a project because they understand that for a long, long time, science and uh, uh, investment business will not, will, will not overlap in 100%. 
they have their competences, you have your competences, and uh, Startup Hub Poland is a place where you can comfortably meet and while having coffee, talk about the uh, feasible uh, aspect or economical aspect of your surveys. Uh, these, uh, uh, these young lady over here and, uh, and myself uh, uh, um, also on this slide, we are executive uh, unit of the Startup Hub Poland. Piotrek is uh, um, uh, managing the fund, the Start, uh, Start Venture at Poland. Just for you to know, Olga is sitting over there and she is very much well um, ready to, to talk to you. And um, By the way, I need to say it because uh, you have inspired me actually during, your, during the previous uh, panel talking about internationalization of science. So we, being not scientists, but uh, let's say facilitators, we are also very international and I'm a proud member of the biggest but still ethnical minority uh, in Startup Hub Poland because I'm Polish and uh, all, all gas roots are Belarusian. We have two Ukrainians, and I have Nigerian, have Jewish, uh, Albanian, and, uh, and uh, people f and one, one uh, analyst from Czech Republic. So we also believe that without this element of internationalization, not much will happen on the field of really innovative uh, concepts. Uh, foundation for uh, for uh, Polish science uh, has this, uh, um, in, a, in, a, in my opinion, I mentioned it on the beginning, and it's not a um, elegant word to uh, to give the honors to the host, but also a deep, com deep mm, let's say, uh, my best understanding of the role of Foundation for Polish Science in our Polish uh, ecosystem. Because this organization, as it's been proved today, uh, knows how to reach uh, people uh, who are willing to, uh, to consider, strange form, but who are willing to consider to stay in Poland and to use Polish chances for their private or, let's say, research team uh, purposes. Uh, but there are more organizations. Uh, even this slide is not, uh, is not um, complete because they are becoming, uh, the, the subject is becoming more and more in interesting uh, Poland just after Romania in European Union 28 is the most brain drained country in the world. As I said on the introductory remarks on behalf of Marek Bożestowski, I believe that it's not bad. It's good that scientists and high tech specialists are going abroad uh, because uh, they come back with uh, Western or, or Eastern or Far Eastern standards for research. They come back with good language. They come back with network which is uh, hard to to underestimate and um, they will eventually come to Poland to make some um, some surveys or some research or some business together with Polish or international colleagues staying in Poland. But still in that moment, in year 2015, uh, we don't have to, uh, we, we, we have some chairs missing. No, I'm not talking about these five chairs on the front of, of the our our room, but generally we have some chairs missing and we want people from abroad to occupy these chairs and we want to, l we as a society right now, I'm uh, referring to uh, myself as a member of this, of this uh, ecosystem, we really want to learn from colleagues from abroad what are their standards, what are, what are their um, um, goals or, or interests, scientific or business. And uh, my conclusion would be about uh, introdu introducing you another a great member of my team, which is Alexander Mokrecki. I hope, Alex, you are somewhere here. Okay, Alex is here. And Alex is our head analyst, and uh, I would say he is the most legitimate also to talk about uh, high-tech, uh, high-profile projects in our team. So please recognize Alex uh, here uh, during the coffee, which is after this, uh, uh, which is after this, um, this um, very session. Thank you, Dominika. Uh, uh, we, uh, he's also uh, eager to, to talk with you. So thank you very much for this, let's say, broad and very general section of, of this part of our meeting, which is again uh, the business or the commercialization side of research and, and uh, science in Poland. And right now uh, let me uh, pass the microphone to Piotrek Pietrzak, who is our new colleague in our ecosystem. Uh, he for, for, for last days, he is a member of Start Venture at Poland board. Um, maybe he will sa say more about his background. What I want to say is that um, without the high investment um, managerial skills, um, there is no possibility for us to exist because 
the, the, the sole role of Startup Hub Poland is to make bridges over uh, this uh, fr front of, of the o over this uh, um, barriers like um, the lack of finances, lack of competences, lack of networking. So Piotrek uh, represents all of these uh, values, and I'm happy to to pass my microphone to him. Thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, once again, uh, I hope you enjoyed this meeting today. Thank you. And um, as Maciek said just a couple of minutes ago, uh, he didn't want to talk about money. I, I want to talk about, about the money. And I guess there are some people in here that would like to get some money from, from uh, any investor or any grants. Who's willing to take some money from me? Oh, there's one. Yes, that's good. So uh, once again, thank you. And um, my name is Piotr Pietrzek, as Maciek said. I joined recently uh, the, um, the capital vehicle of the startup um, Hub Poland. We do uh, worked um, very, very intensely for the last couple months uh, on different projects. And I would like you to, to get into some details on that to understand if you are willing to talk to us later and if you are considering to uh, be our partners, okay? And that's the slide that you've already seen, and that's the major areas we are interested in. And um, my big question here is actually, if you consider getting some other options for the uh, capital, like grants, because we are not the ones who would be competing with uh, the grant providers. And uh, if we talk about this particular areas, these eight areas, there will be probably a lot of grants to be taken from the local or regional or uh, state um, grant providers, we are the support for that. We do invest along the um, grants and um, having said that, this is our uh, reverse triangle of the projects coming into um, uh, startup, um, Start Venture Poland, which is the capital vehicle of Startup Hub Poland. We've seen more than 400, uh, 400 projects. So it's actually more than 500 applications right now. And out of that, uh, we have selected several project for, projects for the um, pre-incubation process. Pre when we, I talk about pre-incubation, this is something that we do together with, uh, with you, with the um, entrepreneurs or the young entrepreneurs or the scientists willing to become entrepreneurs. This is the... Uh, area when we provide um, experts, provide capital, provide the networking to Polish international um, uh, experts and, and, and people who would be willing and uh, ready to, um, to assess your project, help you develop and commercialize it. Um, we as a, a financial arm of the Startup Hub Poland we work very closely with our partner, Giza Polish Venture, which is the next step for the funding. Because what I would like to highlight is that it's not just the money from grants. This is for the basic research. Then the money from, for example, us, uh, having said that, the money for the pre-incubation and um, checking if we are ready to start commercial, uh, commercialization of the project then we need to keep in mind that if we start going from, from uh, the science point into the business point, we need to be ready for, um, for big challenges, which includes challenge, challenges to finance the project. We work very closely with financial partners, um, which provides us with a kind of deep pockets. And uh, that means if we've seen a couple of slides ago, the eight major areas we are interested in. We can provide a lot of capital, for example, for biotechnologies, um, bio biotechnological projects, and that's the reason we, I believe we can be a very good and very interesting partner for you um, on both the scientific level as well as the um, business and capital level. Um, so let me get into details of talking about the money, how you could get money from us. This is 
what we provide. This is the um, capital for um, the, 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 um, the research and uh, the um, analysis for the proof of principle and proof of um, concept stages. This is a very early stage and there are just very few capital providers or capital investors willing to put money onto the table for you to finance the research in this very early stage um, as we consider that from the business point of view, as we consider that from the um, commercialization point of view. It's very early, it's very risky business and that's the reason uh, for not just looking at the 100% um, private capital but um, we could combine that with um, grants. We as um, Start Venture Poland are a kind of combination for the grants and private capital. We have the chances to be uh, a very, very good combination for that since if you have the project to be commercialized, to be um, developed from the uh, very early stage of uh, scientific research into the b working business, uh, we can provide you with the capital, it's up to um, almost 1 million euro for um, the early stage and then uh, it's up to another million euro for further development, that including grants from our partner, so the National Center for uh, Development and Research. So, um, the next step is to make sure you don't fail because of the lack of money. Uh, I, I said I was to talk about money all the time. Our partner, Giza Polish Venture, is a first Polish-Israeli VC fund that focuses um, on the same um, areas as we do. And it's been uh, on the market for a couple of years now. Mm, there is there's more than uh, 9 million euro invested in 15 companies um, by our partners and we are very proud to have them on our side. We have done um, two investments already that they are our partners and they've provided capital for that. I will talk about that in just in a minute. Uh, I just want to make sure that you understand that when we talk uh, Poland is the hub for, um, for research and development project and we would like to invite any person from um, from abroad mm, or from Poland independent if it's a Polish resident of it's uh, just a foreign P PhD student or we uh, we need to understand we need international we need global networking and that's something which uh, Giza Polish Ventures provides us through uh, our Polish partners and through our Israeli partners we have actually access to, um, to the best people in the market uh, on a global level. That's shortly about the Giza. And getting back to how we can give you the money, you need to start to talk to us first and you need to present us your project, sure. Then we can uh, work together on the, um, the plan which is very important. You need to plan uh, what you are going to achieve with you within your research project. We might provide you with the necessary capital, uh, something like 300, 350 um, thousand euro. That's we, what we start with. Um, uh, having said that, we uh, have already the five projects in here that's been financed. Uh, virtual power plant, Hypromine you know, are already incorporated. The other three are with the, fi with the um, uh, pre incubation process. It is um, uh, the actual research and development process is being underway. The overall graph presents us something very, very informative. It is how it's uh, structured. The m basic thing is we are interested in your projects, you need to understand that we are willing and happy to talk to you and there's money on the table to be taken on this part. Once again, the same board, uh, please remember this is just, not just the four of um, persons in here, there's pretty much many more in the, in the uh, 
um, in the back. So uh, we, we have the most important partners presented here. Uh, then we have the partners in Israel, uh, in, in the US, in the UK. And that's much again me again. Uh, talking about me, uh, I joined the company very recently. It's not more than two months now. But I'm very, very glad to, um, that that was a very good decision. And I've been working with, in a very, very um, encouraging environment, which means for you, a very good sign. It is if you start to talk to us, we are not uh, to, we will not squeeze you as a, a scientific um, uh, scientific resource. We will treat you as a partner. This is something very important and you need to understand when you talk to any other uh, potential financial partners, uh, you need to be very care, uh, you need to care about the project and you need to understand that uh, your partner understands your projects as well. Okay, the, the projects we've been looking at, there are several names here. Uh, if you come to us asking for money, uh, we might be willing to provide it, but no, not all of the projects will succeed. This is just a sample of the projects we've analyzed, and some of them are already not um, ongoing. So we suspended the project uh, simply because not every project will succeed. We provide money for the um, proof of principle and proof of concept if it's not reached and it's not, or it, the results are not satisfactory, together we decide to suspend it. If the situation in the market or if the situation within the project changes, we might be willing to continue the work. But what's important here, you do not risk too much. We are the ones who risk the capital. You risk that you've tried, which is very, very good. You would not be aware of what you're losing if you didn't try to, to risk. In here, we have two um, companies already incorporated, two project on projects ongoing and very, very promising. And then we have uh, six projects um, which are under the final steps of negotiations. And uh, I just realized it's uh, um, still top secret. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying that you might be w uh, interested to talk to the people who work in the projects and ask how, what's their exper um, experience with, with us as a partner. And uh, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure uh, you, you get very good opinions about our part uh, as a partner. The incorporated two projects, Virtual Power Plant, it's a software developer, developer that will, uh, is providing and will provide even better solutions for management of the energy use efficiency. And we've, um, we've actually provided a company of capital um, without, within the last couple of months. We started to, uh, with the investment agreement last December. The other one, it's Hypromine. Uh, it's a very interesting project um, uh, on the research on protein-based uh, further for, um, you know, for animal farming. Uh, and uh, we believe this is, this w could be something that m provides a breakthrough for the mm, f for the water and energy saving within the farming industry. The next ones are nano diagnostics, uh, something that might help provide uh, doctors with a better treatment opportunities and treatment diagnostic. I'm mean, sorry, um, the diagnostics of uh, the cancers. Uh, um, the other one is uh, nanosanguis, which is uh, another uh, uh, research project focused on uh, particles that are able to transport oxygen within the human or animal blood uh, as a blood substitute. Very early stage, very promising. We have no idea if it succeed. It will, if it will succeed, but we we've risked, and we expect it to you know, to be successful yet. Um, our strategy is to uh, provide capital for the research and development, but we are financial um, investor. It means we have some expectations about the project, which are uh, the ones how much money we will make it on the project. 
and uh, how long we are going to wait for the money, again money, which means that we expect the project to provide us with uh, at least 40% of IRR, so internal rate of return, uh, which means that we do invest money, but if the projects are, uh, mm, uh, if the pro perspectives of, of the projects are, are, are good, and we would like to exit it by three years from now, from, from the start. Um, the Startup Venture Poland is the first vehicle uh, getting money from the National Center of Research and Development within the Bridge Alpha uh, framework, but we are planning to open another one, hopefully early next year. That means that if we uh, have run of money this year, we will, you would still ha be um, having many chances to, you know, to, to get in touch with us even later this year or next year, and we will be glad to talk about your projects um, anytime. And what we would like to be, it's actually the, 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 to be the first, first choice hub for Polish experts or international uh, scientists to, to, um, to contact and to start working if anyone considers growing their research and companies in Poland. We believe Poland has the chance to become the hub for uh, scientific research and uh, its commercial commercialization. So having said that, we work closely with several um, initiatives, several um, uh, startup organizations through um, Central Europe, and not only Central, but through Europe, um, that provides us with um, interesting um, insights into what's happening in the market, what's happening within the scientific uh, world. And I think that's the most basic things. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, please, do you, do you have any questions I could address right now? Or you can reach me during the coffee break, whatever you choose. Thank you. You are highly welcome to ask questions right now. We wanted to finish the, the, the presentation part a little bit earlier to listen your uh, your question. What I want to say before the first question will emerge is that what is not written on the previous slide is our um, general strategy, which is because Start Venture at Poland is being controlled and run by non-for-profit organization, we want this financial exits after two years to be so beneficiary that Startup Hub Poland will uh, really enlarge its spectrum of interest and it, uh, the foundation will have its own, not public nor private, but foundation um, goal-oriented money to... Yeah, sure, thank you for that. And of course, we, it's not going just to be successful for us. It's going to be successful for you. So you will be the financial beneficiary of uh, our investments. Please remember about that. Thank you, Piotrek. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, we just need a uh, organization that will have uh, financing um, like um, really secured for the next year. And this is why we decided to make the uh, vehicle, the financial vehicle, over the non-for-profit foundation uh, to supply the foundation with, uh, with money for n another generation of, of uh, scientific startups. So please ask questions. Kuba is moving. Yeah. <laughs> right, so another quick question then. Um, so in your inverted pyramid, um, uh, which I really enjoyed uh, looking through, one thing that I sort of uh, would be interested in as well as, as a scientist who is a primarily a scientist, potentially in, interested in, in maybe creating at some point a, a startup with someone, but one thing that kind of prohibits me from that is that already the first step which to you as, I suppose, investors and, and business people generally seems to be the obvious step, which is just an application. To us scientists, very often that's not such an obvious step because we would have absolutely no idea even where to start. So the question is, uh, Piotr already mentioned it uh, when we were talking outside a little bit. Uh, so the question to me would be a question of workshops. Do you in any way reach out to the scientific community and do you provide workshops and do you just inform us generally how to even start? 
Uh, it's not only our uh, great uh, satisfaction and, and joy, but also our mission to make such uh, meetings and uh, warming up sessions. Uh, um, we organize some ourselves. Predominantly, we are making alliances with uh, greater organizations like Foundation for Poverty Science or uh, Smolna. It's a um, Smolna Cztery, it's a um, municipal uh, accelerator or a hub for municipal uh, um, uh, subsidies and, and networks. Um, we are also very active outside of Poland, basically, because you are, you, you are actually a person who, um, um, how to say, um, who have normally and obviously closer touch with us because we are living in the same country, in the same cities, and we can uh, call without the prefix 0048 to each other. But uh, let's say the, the predominant uh, part of our, of our routine work every day is to travel around the European Union countries and outside of European unions in the Eastern European countries, and also to help scientists to, um, to, to find partner in, uh, in commercialization here. Uh, we understand, so um, usually we, we work like this, when a scientific project is coming to us, uh, we are not wake, waiting for uh, months to combine this very project with another and make a warming up session, but we work vis-a-vis -vis given project together. Because uh, as, I, as I said, and Piotrek also mentioned, uh, we are surrounded by ad hoc satellite uh, with um, uh, habilitations, uh, PhDs or, or other uh, le legitimation for, uh, for their competences. So uh, it's more effective, I think, both for researchers and for uh, the foundation to create a mini ecosystem uh, or mini uh, panel of experts around every project which is I in interested. Um, yes. And just w one thing that um, I just realized, you might have any kind of project and you might think it's good or not for commercialization just if you let us know we will help you we'll help you to assess it and uh, that's something that I, I would like you to um, convey also an inf information a kind of announcement to all your colleagues and um, teams that you work in uh, do not hesitate to provide us with the projects information uh, it's uh, something that you might not uh, see in the first step that could be a good startup, but we'll help you on that. We'll provide you with the workshops, we'll provide you with the expertise, and uh, having uh, done that, we might uh, decide together, yes, it's worth, let's, let's move together uh, and get to some common goal, or we'll provide you informa with information on how to uh, finance your project, probably not with us, but with somebody else or some grants that we are aware of. So uh, I think the main message from from us today is um, spread the word uh, about our organization and uh, the chances we provide. If there are no questions, I would like to, to throw the ball to, to the audience, to this part of, of the room, uh, which is uh, the the very power or the very influence of the first session was that you have uh, said lots of bitter words about the situation in Poland, which I think should be the fuel for another meetings and to get closer and more meeting each other more often. What, what are the main obstacles from your perspective? Um, uh, the, the the linguistical or or let's say. Um, um, uh, mindset barrier between investors and uh, scientists is one uh, that Kuba mentioned in his question. What, what, what shall we, we, I mean together, like the whole ecosystem represented by both foundations, what we should do better to, uh, to uh, realize your uh, dreams or, or plans or uh, humble plans to, to enter a commercialization market or journey? And it's unacceptable that you have zero. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then we should close the foundation, really. It means that everything has been done and... We failed. We, no, 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 no. Actually, if there is no obstacles and no barriers. So um, 
uh, I I have a very egoistic approach. I want to learn er, uh, from you and drain from 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 your um, uh, experiences of what we could do better because um, s some of our uh, partners uh, are ICT soft innovative projects uh, which we understand uh, really good because they are more popular S science a science written with with grant s on the beginning is more rare so this is one of the the best option for us to learn do not hesitate and say have you ever thought about commercializing your project or uh, or you are not interesting because maybe your university or your research unit do not um, how to say um, um, benefit you with uh, with this kind of activities. I am also f uh, a PhD candidate from different uh, area from from philosophy, so I will not commercialize anything myself. Uh, but uh, I know that my elder colleagues, colleagues and professors are uh, being prized, let's say, for uh, publications, not for uh, other activities. Maybe uh, I've heard also from our colleagues from. Uh, from biotechnology or material sciences or robotics that it's sometimes better for them for, for the career perspective to write a beautiful text about about uh, their um, research not to commercialize it do you also have such motivations that it's better to um, to write a text than to make a patent and commercialize it It's all yours, Dominika. So uh, maybe during uh, drinking coffee, <laughs> there will be ah, there is one question. Okay. Maybe um, to warm up <coughs> the discussion, uh, I'm a scientist and I'm from Ukraine, and uh, I think to, uh, today discussion is very interesting. And uh, in your presentation on commercialization. I think there is one important moment which was not discussed, uh, IP rights. Because uh, what we find in Ukraine, in most cases, in uh, such difficult a areas as biotech, for example, people just uh, do not realize or do not know how to protect uh, it internationally. Because patents are not easy to write, to uh, submit, and to to pay for it even if you need to protect globally in European Union, in Asia and United States. So what you do in, uh, when you get ideas or projects, how you analyze, can it be protectable in such difficult areas as biotech? I will pass it to Piotr. I will just say that yes, we do it and we pay for it because this is also uh, our mission being uh, reinforced by uh, by the public um, uh, grant um, of, of offerings. So yes, ver very much. We are making lots of uh, research on patent um, freedom to operate and uh, c the clean, um, le le the, the, mm, let's say, the, uh, the openness for, for the patent survey. Yes, this is exactly the point that w um, we might highlight. Uh, I do understand that you are coming from different environments and you have different experience. Some of uh, the scientists um, might not have the uh, necessary capacities to provide documentation for IP for, okay. uh, for the patents. And we do finance it. We have um, a large number of um, uh, of the uh, patent experts that we cooperate with. Uh, it's not just for the local market. It's not just for Europe. We do that on a um, key markets. It is the uh, European Union, U US and uh, uh, Far East. And uh, then the, the question comes for, um, for how to finance it. As Magic said, we do it as well. Uh, together with the, um, uh, and with the scientists, with the entrepreneur, the young entrepreneur, we decide which markets should be covered first and we are willing to uh, to uh, we not just are willing to uh, assist scientists within this area but uh, we have very good exper uh, expertise within this um, area so the IP the intellectual property protection 
it's something that uh, you can, uh, we would be very glad to discuss it with you and help you and your colleagues to uh, protect uh, your, your property, your intellectual uh, property. And who owns the patent then? Yeah, sure. Um, as we said, we want to be the investor and it depends which m in which moment we provide the capital for the IP production. And uh, in, in general, we should do that uh, as soon as we have the company incorporated and all the IP is within the company. We are the minority shareholder of a company. So the scientists, so our uh, partners, are the mm, key mm, uh, beneficiaries of uh, our capital and uh, yes the the IP is within a cert a new entity or uh, entity that we set up as yeah, startup exactly. if it ends up with a startup yeah yeah but, but, but I have another question because you are talking always about the scientist that is coming to your office putting forward some sort of idea and truly that's uh, I think very optimistic view because usually scientist works in at the university and uh, it is not like Mr. Jekyll and uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde that he has something in his cellar trying to work on something very useful that can be sold and, and stuff but he works at the university and this idea usually comes from this work that he's carrying out at the university so is your partner really a scientist that is just coming through your door or you work with the university and trying to apply for grants to NCBR and so on and so forth? Because I think this, this is something that would scare me. All right, so um, you touched a very important issue. What are the local regulation of certain universities, how to treat the patents uh, or the intellectual property uh, created with uh, w the help of their tools, their equipment, by a team of their workers, right? And for our, from our experience, we treat the scientists, we treat the research teams as our partners, yet we do not forget about the institutions. So uh, from early stage, when we talk to the team, the research team, we also <coughs> make sure uh, that we have uh, in, the in the circle of interest uh, our in institution as a partner as well. So. Mm, based on that, we create a structure for the investments and for the finan financing of the project that is both satisfactory for the scientists or the research team or whatever we call it, and the institution that um, they are uh, working for. Sometimes it is required for them to suspend their work at the institution because y you can't have 24 hours, seven days a day a week work, working both on startup and for the uh, institution. Uh, but we do that on a mutual agreement base. So we have the yes from uh, institution, we have the yes from the scientist, and uh, the yes from uh, the capital providers. Uh, I will give you a fast supplemental to what Piotr said. Uh, so uh, coming back to the first question of yours, the, the patent. Uh, nor Startup Hub Poland Foundation, uh, neither uh, Start Venture Poland Seed Fund is a collector of patents. Uh, if, for example, coming back to Piotrek's slides uh, with the projects that have been conclusive but we haven't go with the, w along with them. Next one. Uh, the some, some of them started the uh, patent procedure. Of course, then the patent and intellectual property comes back to the, uh, to the team. It's uh, super important for you to understand. We are, we are deep inside the process, so sometimes we do not underline it because we think it's obvious, but it's important. If we fail to create a startup, the all uh, intellectual property is coming back to the... To the uh, 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 of course, otherwise we will be, let's say, obstructing the process of further commercialization for with you with the different uh, investor and uh, and uh, the, f the foundation is definitely against that so of course a patent is coming back to you and your other question for me it's uh, even more interesting because um, that's true in Poland me, me myself me personally and my team is working with uh, technological brokers with special officers for commercialization with deans sometimes even with rectors 
Uh, but uh, in Ukraine, for example, we are more cl far closer to the given uh, to the given scientist team. Uh, I, I would like I would love maybe that would be, that could be um, additional uh, uh, profit for me if you teach me if uh, there are special officers in different Ukrainian um, in different Ukrainian universities who are specialized in in showing the project that, that, that might be interested from the investment uh, perspective, or commercialization perspective. Dominika is giving me signs that it's, uh, sh it should go to the end. Uh, please have additional questions. We are open to answer all of them. And um, uh, generally, this kind of model has succeeded, for example, in the US, in Chile. So we very much believe that uh, in Poland also such a hub could uh, exist could attract people from abroad, could help people who are from abroad but are living in Poland, and, uh, um, and give good examples, because th if we, all the investment that we made this year, it will be just the first generation of investment. So we will just give the good example and the uh, strong voice. Guys, there is such a country like Poland, and it's uh, really eager to help your uh, both scientist, sci scientific and, and commercial uh, journeys. Should you close the session? Please enjoy your, uh, your coffee and please be back in uh, 15 minutes. Uh, the last part of uh, our meeting, we will discuss the FNPs uh, programs and offers for as well as uh, Polish as uh, foreign uh, time.
closely related to doing business. And uh, we will mention several characteristics of our new instruments, which will uh, lead you closely to the questions whether to commercialize or what to commercialize or what to do regarding the market and uh, your future. Because the issue, uh, the main issue of our meeting today is not only know your uh, problems, but also to present some opportunities to you in order to take it uh, seriously into consideration for the next years. Or to ask your colleagues and friends abroad to perhaps consider these options uh, for doing science or doing business to in Poland. Uh, doing business uh, in our programs, uh, it is uh, also very welcome because there are some characteristics of our new programs which will be uh, related to business. For instance, we pay for intellectual property rights for all applications costs. We will also make a special program devoted to the teams working on a specific uh, product or specific services. Uh, which, uh, which would be the aim of the project and for the entire teams. My colleagues here at the table will tell you more and um, will be more specific about our new call for proposals. Uh, all of them uh, will be open this year, soon, perhaps uh, this summer or September, and all of them are open to all nationalities. Some of them are open to the people still being abroad. But certainly all of them for all nationalities and certainly for to all of them you don't need to write anything in Polish. And uh, what to say more about business opportunities and science opportunities is that you can also work at the companies while you realize projects funded by the foundation. That's something new. So far, foundation didn't fund companies. This time, projects done within companies will be also allowed for funding. We start with the presentation of homing program. And uh, my colleague, Joasia Rutkowska, uh, will be responsible for running uh, the first call at least. And uh, the call is very complicated, so she will tell you more. Darek uh, will uh, present you the calls open for team leaders. And Tomasz. Poprawka will tell you about something special, also very new, and uh, uh, Professor Maciekowski made reference to this uh, instrument several times this morning. You perhaps didn't notice that. However, the issue is to create new research organizations, new research units. And Tomasz Poprawka will tell you how we think about this program. And now I give the floor to Joasia to start with her presentation. As Michał said, I will be responsible for a program uh, called Homing Reintegration. Close. Homing Reintegration. Uh, and this is uh, fin financial support for returning grants. And uh, who can apply? Uh, uh, PI should be young doctor, uh, up to five years of experience, and uh, this limit of five years can be extended. Uh, the maximum extension is uh, nine years uh, in total. And what does it mean uh, ex can be extended? Uh, we uh, uh, we uh, take, uh, take care about all uh, breaks in, uh, in scientific career and uh, paternal maternal leave. Uh, this uh, program, uh, uh, this program uh, could be re realized in 
academia environment. It means in sci with scientific institutes, universities, and in business environment. And uh, we are thinking about uh, small, uh, s uh, small, uh, medium, and big firms. Uh, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, program, we have two scenarios. The first one is re uh, for young doctors which returning uh, from postdocs, including postdocs in Polish institutions, and uh, uh, minimum, uh, minimum, uh, minimum uh, it's nine months of uh, uh, of uh, postdoc uh, uh, in postdoc position abroad or in Polish institution and uh, of course uh, we are open for uh, for young uh, young doctors which 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 want to um, uh, to go to Poland to to start uh, uh, new project in our country uh, and the second scenario is uh, reintegration grants it's uh, for people who have break in a scientific career to summarize this project this proje project is for uh, from uh, from abroad to Poland, from other profession to research, and for all nations. Financial support. Uh, general, general, generally, uh, um, pro project will will uh, will have uh, financial support for two years with a possibility to ex extend uh, extension to three years and uh, extension of the project will be applica will be application to uh, FNP in internal call and uh, of course laureates can apply for project modification in every stage of the project Uh, we 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 give uh, flexible uh, uh, employment arrangements. Uh, it uh, it uh, we we will uh, we will give uh, opportunity to have salaries or stipends. Uh, 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 the laureate will. Uh, uh, will uh, will we, there's a possibility to laureates to uh, cooperate with PhD students or uh, students, and uh, 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 in salaries and stipends, of course, there will be possibility to pay students and PhD students from the grant. Of course, we have lump sum for general costs, and uh, there will there will be fixed to, uh, fixed total sum for the project. Uh, if you have any further questions, please uh, not host a surprise to contact me. There is my email. That's, that's all. Thank you, Anna. So. Uh, uh, as you've just heard, homing program and return program is for all nationalities and is or for coming to Poland or for coming to science, coming to science from other employment. And uh, this part of the homing program will be open this year and it is for individual people and for their own individual projects, short projects. So it aims at individuals. Like Fernando, have you have you done the homing program? Yes, Fernando actually is a, a laureate, a awardee of a previous uh, homing program. The new program is a little bit different. 
However, it's still the same idea that you are young and young doctor and you can do experience uh, in Poland. Short experience, two or three years, individual experience, you are allowed to hire students to your project. If you, if you are allowed to buy, buy, buy your faculty, you can have also a PhD or a PhD student um, in project. However, it's quite flexible uh, and individual. And the next presentation will be about teams. So in order to apply to this program, you have to envisage yourself as a team leader. Thank you. Yes? No, all information regarding this call for proposals will be published on our web probably no earlier than September. Uh, good afternoon. So, as uh, Michal said, I will introduce uh, some programs that are dedicated for teams. Uh, starting with a component that is within the homing reintegration program, because in this program we have a um, component that is dedicated for young team leaders, that uh, because we, from our experience, we see that there are a lot of young postdocs that uh, are already, uh, they are ready to start a new team. Yes, the team with uh, the small group. Uh, so we want to uh, give them fin financial support for, for this first team they, they will, will initialize. And uh, the rules are really similar to the general home integration idea. So uh, we are aiming for PIs who are uh, between three to five years after obtaining the PhD. And uh, this uh, limit also can be extended by all breaks, let's say, in, in the uh, scientific work or uh, by the postdocs they took abroad or in the country or in Poland. Um, uh, in the teams, uh, the, these young PIs can uh, build their teams, they team around some students, PhD students, and also uh, some other young postdocs. So the people at the same level that they are, but uh, who are not yet ready to start, start the team. Uh, if it comes to the financial support that we want to provide to these uh, researchers, uh, we want to support the projects uh, from three, uh, up to three years, but with the possibility of extension to five years. And this extension also will be filled, uh, it, it will be application filled in our internal call, because after this initial fears, we will, or maybe a year later, uh, earlier, or etc., we will think about it, of course, uh, to, we will start a call, internal call, uh, for, for these leaders to, for the extension, because we want to evaluate their projects, see if they are uh, doing uh, okay and the teams are uh, progressing in the right way. Uh, during the project, uh, team leader can um, apply for modifications of the projects because the reality uh, is changing really fast. So uh, even some components of the projects uh, may be not as attractive after the year of uh, uh, carrying out the research and uh, maybe someone already have done it. So uh, the team leader want to switch their research to, to some other branch uh, of, of uh, research, innovative ideas. So we will have, uh, the, the team leader will have, the, will have this possibility. So he can apply for change in the product, also for some uh, financial, financial changes. Uh, during the, the project, we will offer also the flexible employment arrangements. So uh, the um, uh, Laureate, the principal investigator, will have a um, pool of, of money from which he can choose if he wants to uh, provide for, for his students uh, uh, cost to the salaries or, or stipends. The salaries will be uh, counted like the cost to company salaries, so all the uh, side costs will be covered and will be included I in the limit of the salaries. Uh, also, we will provide a lump sum for general costs uh, and uh, the total project will be a fixed 
uh, total sum for the project. So uh, in this the fixed total sum, the maximum sum, which will be also uh, announced by us during the, uh, at the, when the call will be announced, uh, they, need, they will include the salaries and the project costs. Uh, so let me interrupt Darek, because first team, we talked about first team, so we talked about a group of young people, so the postdocs, in fact. The postdocs who finish the postdocs, so probably you are around here in this room, so the people who came to Poland for their first experience. And uh, after finishing their first experience as postdoc, you don't need to apply for your uh, another postdoc or for to look for another position as, as, a, as a young doctor, but you can directly go for your first team regarding the program homing still, but in, uh, in this new uh, way of funding, new way of funding in homing will be to establish your first teams. And your postdoc experience is not counted within these five years of experience, which is usually the limit of the homing program. So Darek will tell you about two other teams, two other possibilities to apply for team uh, leaders. Uh, yes, because we are going from the from young researchers, the young apprentices, and then we are and going up and up for more advanced researchers. So team, uh, uh, the team just named team, yes, will be dedicated for advanced researchers. So somewhere. Uh, also, it can be also a young person with, uh, after a few years after their uh, PhD, if they already publish really, really good uh, uh, papers or have uh, uh, really significant achievements in their scientific work. Uh, advanced doesn't mean that older ones, yes, but, but advanced in the research. Uh, so it will be competition also for uh, team leaders and uh, the aim of the project, uh, the project needs to uh, aim on solving some scientific problems which will be crucial to uh, international competitiveness. So uh, if we are talking about international competitiveness, uh, in this project the PI need to find also some international partnership uh, to uh, just to share the experience between uh, uh, different uh, or, or share the different styles of uh, doing research. Uh, the team project will be a bit longer than, the fir than this uh, f uh, team component in home integration. Uh, it will last from three to six years. Uh, and uh, the rules of extension and modifications are the same uh, in us in home integration. Actually, are they are the same in all our our programs here. Um, uh, if it comes to the financial aspect, it is the same than uh, that in the this um, previous team that I've mentioned, but. Uh, of course, you can expect that the uh, fixed total sum for the project would be higher in this call than in uh, home and integration call. Uh, the last program that are dedicated for teams is something completely new in foundation, is a uh, technology team, Team Tech. Uh, it has the general rules similar to, to team program but uh, it's dedicated for researchers which are experienced in updating innovations. And the aim of the project is uh, predefined product, product, service, or process. So it's uh, just the thing that is ready to, let's say, uh, after uh, some work ready to put on the market. Uh, and the project needs to be uh, really applicable to economy, that the, this application to economy to be uh, highlighted in, in the project. Uh, the support is the same as in the team. It's uh, uh, three to six years and all, with all other benefits uh, with uh, concerning extensions or modifications. Um, and uh, also we are 
we have the same uh, idea of uh, financing the, the group and the leader. Uh, what's important in, that's in last words about this program, that all programs uh, the, um, dedicated for teams and also the homing uh, reintegration program uh, are open to all undertakings. So that means that uh, either uh, institutions from public or private sectors uh, sector can apply for it. So if uh, it will be a private uh, entity or a company, of course, it will involve some state aid, but we are ready to it and it will be uh, due to the general exceptions uh, to regulation is bare for uh, European Commission and the rules are just uh, taken from, from, from there. And uh, we are also open to uh, entities that are doing economic or non-economic activities. So that's all about this, just short review about the project for, for, for teams. And uh, if you will have any questions, you can uh, always email me or after the last presentation, you can ask them and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Uh, so I remind you that the session is the final session of the day. So uh, you will have, to, of course, time as m as much as you want uh, for questions. And perhaps when Tomasz finishes his presentation, we will uh, have time for them. Okay. So the uh, uh, next proposal that we have, the proposition, and an idea that Foundation would like to pursue in the next years to come, based on the uh, European Structural Funds, is an idea called International Research Agendas. This is what Michał already mentioned while introducing us, and this is what Professor Maczkowski was mentioning a couple of times this morning. And may I, try, may I start with the one thing that for many years um, so far, Foundation has been investing in people. We were not really investing in institutions. While in here, what has been said so far is that we will help and aid to create new research um, units. However, there's a, something very important within that because anyway, even though we will be um, creating new research units, we will actually rely on people because we believe deeply that you actually need an excellent people will like to get into that pursuit to actually make it successful. Um, so what is important is that within this scheme, we would like to create oh yeah, an international research agenda that will be, um, will be implemented within a research unit. So you need a vessel, like a new research um, um, a unit, in the, I mean, with a really diverse legal forms to actually run your international research scientific agenda. And why do we believe it's very important? Because we do have an excellent people in this country. We do see an excellent people outside of Poland, whether they are Polish origin or whether they are um, um, foreigners who would like to come to Poland. And we would like to give them a chance to actually come and to do the research in Poland. We see that, and that actually has been mentioned today during the panel, that within Polish environment and the landscape of research within the universities and other institutions, sometimes it is difficult. There is like a glass ceiling that some people cannot really go beyond that. Therefore, this is the response to that, that excellent people could actually create new structures with a new organizational structure um, that would provide them an environment to actually do what they do best, which is a research, and to create a units that would help them to do that because of the, all of the support that they could gain within such a unit and all that administration burden that has been mentioned today during the panel. We hope that by creating those, the researchers will do the research while the administration will actually help them to do that in the most efficient way possible. Um, within those 
um, agendas, what we believe is very important, that those units will have to apply the, the, the rules of openness. So there will be an open competition for all team leaders. What we're actually talking about is a, a research unit, so you need the PIs, you need the people, a team leaders that will create and will execute that research scenario. Therefore, all those team leaders will be selected in open competitions and they will be open to all nationalities who would like to reach out to all Polish community, but also to people who are at the moment running their research outside. There, are, there might be postdoctoral trainees in Max Planck or MIT, wherever. But if they are excellent and they will be applying to those um, um, uh, uh, calls, they might have a chance to start their own group in a completely new environment, something that has not yet been seen in Poland. And what is also very important is the role of a director of such a, a unit. And we believe that it's very important that the director understands what the science is. Therefore, we would like to see a scenario in which director of a unit is actually selected among um, uh, the, uh, the team leaders, which is, a, a, for instance, um, a model of the Max Planck Institutes that, as many of you know, are very successful in those terms. Um, one key thing, which has been mentioned already before by Darek, which is an international partnership, which is very important in running research. We see a data that shows us that if you do your research in a scientific collaboration with your international peers, you actually are more open and you publish better, you, s you get better outreach, and this is something that we would like to also implement within those um, uh, res international research agendas. How we would like to do that is to do this with the strategic strategic partnership with a research with an excellent research institution from abroad. Um, European Commission um, last year has initiated um, a completely independent call which is called Teaming of Excellence and that was one of the ideas to actually within the, the, the European call to create a new unit or to um, upgrade an existing unit with this international partnership. That is very important. We would like to continue and incorporate that within those uh, research agendas. And we believe that that might be a very helpful tool to actually transfer the best practices, those good practices from those units, the institutions that are, do that are running research, that are enabling research to happen in a very good way so that those practices can be transferred to Poland to a new institution starting from zero, from scratch. And we believe that if you do it from zero, you can actually implement good practices from the beginning and do not go in the routes that at the end of the day will prohibit you from, from being effective and efficient. And one of those, um, um, one of the vessels for for those international peers is the International Research um, um, Committee that will be a safeguard of the quality for those units. In one way, it will safeguard the scientific excellence because the International Research Committee will be involved in the open competitions for teams, for team leaders. So it is this international community that will evaluate and it will advise on whom to hire and whom not. And the international community will be involved in evaluation of the agenda. And therefore, to actually be um, um, sort of, we, we hope that within this, with, with applying those rules, the, in, the unit, the research institute, will be actually going forward with the quality. So you will be doing a self-check of whether our performance is good, whether it's actually on a top level, or are we lagging somewhere behind? Um, uh, there's another very important issue to this, is because we, those, this program will actually create the new research units, but without actually founding any big infrastructure. What we believe and what we see uh, is that there's a number of large infrastructure that has been built in the last couple of years here in Poland using structural funds, for instance, and we would like to use those 
buildings, laboratories, some of them were equipped with the really excellent um, equipment and to place such new research units in this um, infrastructure and of course we hope for some local regional partnerships with the local um, actors for the access of students, master students and PhD students and so on. And in general the budget for the whole instrument is quite large. It's a little bit over half a billion slotes. With this we would like to create or to enable to start eight to ten such international research agendas um, um, in place. Within each you will have a number of teams working, therefore the budget is quite big. For a single project um, we think it's about up to 50 million zloty for, an, uh, for about five years time. And I think this is it from my side. I think there is already a, a sort of a summary slide, so I think I'll just um, pass the microphone to, to Michal to comment on that, okay? Thank you, Tomek. So the summary is that we started from home integration and uh, individual small uh, reintegration projects or postdoc projects. And within this homing integration, there is already a chance to apply for the first team. For teams, team is a call for a serious and uh, established scientists. Uh, it could be also young, of course, in order to create a proper new research uh, team. Team technology, tech team, T tech team is oriented towards products, towards services. However, it's the team, so it has to be a team leader applying, uh, well established, of course, and experienced uh, in, uh, in uh, innovation. And international research agendas, it's for institutions. International means internationally uh, established by the partner of Poland and the partner from abroad, institutional partner. It has to be an international research committee. It has to be international environment, international team leaders, international team members. So everything in this international research unit uh, has to be a new uh, quality. It has to be added value for the Polish landscape and has to be a very well-funded research uh, opportunity and research positions. Uh, in fact, what we didn't say, that, oh, of, of course, uh, Thomas said, that human resources, the people, are always the foundation's uh, objective, main uh, aim, and main, uh, uh, of course, uh, vision, that we fund uh, the people in order to, to foster the innovation, in order to foster their careers and the economy. And in this, this uh, portfolio now, we are about spe very specific about this, uh, about this technology and economy and uh, international positions and the uh, career in Poland. So the new way of funding a uh, scientific career in Poland will happen, S uh, hopefully uh, this year. So uh, thank you for the attention and uh, the floor is yours uh, for any sort of uh, comments. Uh, will be there any condition about the uh, team, I mean this uh, uh, agency, uh, that there are one Polish and some other nationalities or without any Polish? Is it settled in rules or not? So your question concerns international research agendas. Yes, sorry, I was yeah, thinking about yes, agendas. We've switched. The slide was actually very, posit uh, very uh, helpful, the slide, or the final one. Oh. Uh, because we see uh, the, the names. Tomasz, will, will you answer? I quite didn't get the question. You mean if there will be any conditions, conditions for those team leaders? Yes. No. Yes. They have to be excellent. Yeah. And it, it 
Yeah, absolutely. That would be that would be super. I mean, we would really like to see people applying from abroad. I mean, one thing is the those initials, those individuals who will um, apply for the whole project. And well, we will not distinguish if you're from um, um, Germany or from Poland. However, this that person has to have that critical partnerships, and the person has to be excellent in science. We believe that. Someone who is about to start um, an, an instrument which is that big, that starts from a very m minimum, and that minimum is actually an, a maximum of excellence, because that single person will have to gather a whole environment and, and around him or her. So we would really like to see a strong researchers who would like to devote themselves to create new institutions and to act as sort of a, a magnets for other teams, team leaders or PIs who will actually apply to work as a PI in this new institution. So it, it, it's, you know, if we would get the Nobel Prize willing to, um, to set up a, 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 such an institute would be great. And why I say Nobel Prize, because it's, you know, it, those are the names that, if you're a researcher and you see that there's a, that particular person behind that institution, you know that this is going to be a, a big thing, that this person is securing an excellence and is securing the quality of that undertaking. Thank you, Tomasz. Yeah. I have a few questions. Uh, first thing is, what's our long-term plan? Because you know foreigners can come, you know they can apply and uh, they can stay for you know I mean three to six years, and eventually they may become a group leader. And you know, <coughs> is there any guarantee? You know, because you know as per your situation in, in Poland, it's not for, uh, possible for foreigners to find jobs in a uh, academic, in, you know, universities, something like that. So, is there any specific plan for them? Uh, we can influence only uh, through funding. We can influence the employment through our funding. And we can only open uh, positions. We can only uh, make... Uh, so my question is, the, you know, for example, the group leader position, what you say, in the new research units, it's uh, just six, uh, six to eight. And how many people you are going to employ and how long it will be? And you know, is there any um, guarantee for them? Because otherwise people don't come. Because you know, in my experience, I have been living in Portugal for nearly 12 years, okay, and I have been doing very well, and I was doing everything excellent. And now, you know, there is a crisis, and you know, uh, there is no transparency, you know, because f first thing who will be affected is the foreigners, you know. So you need to guarantee them. Then only you can attract people here. You're right that there is, uh, the, the whole perspective is very important. And the, the, the no, this is seems to be, you know, for me, just to attract people and mm -hmm. their ideas and eventually, you know, throw them out. Mm -hmm. Go on. So one thing is that, you know, we, what we're hoping to attract or people that we are hoping to attract are good enough not to, you know, run that project and end up with nothing. We're hoping, and we're seeing that in the institutions in, around the world, that you employ people, and you employ best people that you can actually gather in that place. So because those best people guarantee that within a couple of years, they will actually bring much more money that you initially provided to them through the competitive funding. We've been talking today about the, 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 the getting money from NCN, and no one really mentioned the ERC, and the competitive funding in the European Union. I mean, what we would like to achieve is to use that money as a sort of a, 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 a seed fund. <coughs> and within, and we, I mean, we've been talking with people who did that before us and who actually started uh, new institutes with a, a little money or with a money that has been limited and invested that money very wisely in the people that within five, seven years, they actually brought more than twice of the initial investment. And th you have to think of it in a such a way. And if, if the attitude of a leader is that, I'm going there for a project and then what? Um, well, I'm not sure if that's the attitude that we're looking no, forward. No, uh, okay, you are wrong. But I do understand your, your question that uh, one would like to have a, 
a secure mm -hmm. um, position. But I think you have to, what, what, what we're looking forward and what Marta has mentioned at the beginning is that you're looking for a very certain type of people that they have a strong attitude and they will be fighting for their projects and also because they will be a part of that institution by winning a competitive funds, they will be actually creating this new landscape. Okay, so uh, is there any specific areas you are concentrating on? Because you know, as far as I know, uh, at present in Europe, uh, you know, mainly about molecular medicine, you know, cancer research, something like that. So you do you have any specific priorities? In the in our case, uh, of course, we can um, we can talk about some limits. To uh, the limits concern mainly social sciences and humanities. Uh, however, it's not our idea to, to settle these limits. Uh, however, all other areas are vast, uh, are, are, are covered through the funding because the funding is European uh, Regional Development Fund, and uh, this fund is uh, subject to certain uh, national and European um, uh, rules. So uh, we have to limit. Uh, to s yeah, we have to say that social sciences and humanities are not secure in this situation. Yeah, I understand, but you know, uh, what you are talking is about Horizon 2020, right? The priorities will be uh, you know, incorporated into your system, and eventually, what is next after the Horizon 2020? Yes, uh, these priorities uh, will not be the same as in the Horizon 2020. These priorities are any, anything, in fact, uh, which is not social sciences and humanities. Uh, would be uh, very is be proven to be funded through through our system. And what will be next? Of course, we can tell you that this funding will last until 2023. This perspective is this only horizon we can talk about, and uh, because this funding is for this period, and the foundation is not responsible for funding institutions. The, we can fund individuals. We can fund projects. The only exception is international research units, but we, we, we do only the seed money, in fact, for the initial period for the first research groups, and we will set the rules for the international research agendas. We will not fund them we no, uh, later. We know what is the legal framework in Poland of funding research, and we can predict that within this funding uh, uh, rules uh, of Poland, or science in Poland, there is room for funding such units later. And uh, however, in any of our uh, funding systems, we always have the sort of internal uh, evaluation. So, uh, um, okay, well, I have one more question. What is your criteria of excellence? So it's citations, high index? In this foundation is not the criteria like that. The, is the, in this foundation, the criteria is, uh, the, of course, the, the, of, the, of the excellence uh, is international peer review uh, judgment and in panel judgment. In fact, we do three, three stage selection. First, uh, relates mainly to the objective of the program, whether we really, whether the candidate really is the among of this group and the project belongs to the group of projects we intend to fund and the second is uh, from the from the peers uh, internationally internationally and the questions are two originality of the project and uh, the uh, achievement of the applicant achievement what achievement of the applicant originality of the achievements of the Okay, now, you know, what, you, uh, what I can see nowadays in Europe, you know, people are worried too much about citations and mm -hmm. H-index. And in China, they have already started many companies to improve your citations, you know. So <laughs> I am, I, I, please believe me, uh, we signed the, the, the San, Francisco San Francisco protocol, protocol. which, and based on that, I mean, in, within our applications, you're not going to see um, a moment that we would ask you, give us your Hirsch index, provide us with your citations. This is that doesn't really interest us. What we will ask you is to provide your up to three best papers mm -hmm. because we will judge you on the basis of that. Mm -hmm. And it's not us and administrators who's gonna judge you. It's gonna go to your colleagues abroad 
and they will see those free papers, mm -hmm. they will see your curriculum, and they will see if, and they will judge if that is a, a, a piece of work that is actually pushing your field, mm -hmm. or is it something incremental that, well, it's okay, it's a solid piece of work, but it, it's, but it might not be excellent. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I think this is what is very important in a peer review, that it's not by numbers. I mean, if, you, if we were only up to Hirsch indexes and impact factors, we could just calculate, get the ranking list, and that's it. We actually rely on people to assess the quality of other people's work. So uh, what do you really moreover, want to we also uh, are very much uh, able to take risk. So we, are, we have no risk averse. So we really make this um, possible that we fund uh, people with no initial results, okay. uh, with the originality of the project, well, based on the originality of the projects. So what do you really want to achieve from these people? We want these people to be better. Better what? Better, better uh, you know, create, um, uh, you know, companies, uh, jobs, no, uh, it know, the object or publications, yes, yes. you know, you should serious. have something in your mind, that's what I'm you, asking. You're right, that's serious uh, issues regarding, especially regarding the funders. The funder really wants to have results uh, which can uh, be enumerated. Uh, so, number of companies, number of patents, and so on. Uh, in uh, uh, yes, in fact, we will have some uh, indicators to meet, but we never count on uh, on numbers. We never count on numbers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I've got uh, two very quick questions. One is, um, I might have misunderstood in the f first part of the presentation, there was a talk about returning Polish postdoctoral uh, post researchers. So I was trying to understand, so does it mean, um, and also there was a mention that if you could be returning, and I understood it from a Polish institution as a postdoc, and I was quite trying to understand how does it fit in with uh, attracting people from abroad. So is it, can you be returning from a Polish institution uh, as well, or can you be po returning as a Polish postdoc? How does that work? How do you aim towards, especially Poles abroad as well? Okay. So, uh, the, the homing program, uh, have you already come across the homing? Yeah. Because the homing comes uh, from the 2006, we established the program in order to help the uh, uh, Polish postdocs abroad to come back. That was the initial idea of the program. So they, they, they were Polish, who, made, uh, who, who, who have made the PhD, or they make first postdoc experience. They, they were relatively young. So that was for them. So we made the publicity abroad in the journals, in the conference in Berlin, and so on, in order to attract those people. And it was a, uh, quite a success, in fact. 70 uh, people. Uh, it that was uh, very, very, and in the 2010, we enlarged the programs to all nationalities. So you don't need uh, to be a Polish national to apply for coming to Poland. So you are a post, a person uh, after PhD. It at that time that was four years after PhD, and within these four years you can come to Poland for your postdoc position. This program, this uh, homing uh, reintegration or uh, return program, means that you come to Poland and because uh, from abroad, when you are up to five years after your PhD, and uh, you can be a Polish or no Polish origin or, or nationality. Uh, and you can also apply to, uh, to do research projects, being in Poland, but working in the bank, working in the administration, working whatever. After the PhD, majority of PhD, of course, people don't work in academia, not work, even not in industry. However, they have to work in any sector, wherever they find employment immediately after the PhD. So they will be able, they will be also uh, asked, or they will be able to apply, they will be eligible to apply for this reintegration program. 
coming back from the experience, uh, from the from the non-research experience. However, after a, uh, to do a research experience, and the third option is that you did this postdoc already in Poland, and you are still uh, five years young after a PhD. You did po you did postdoc, so the postdoc is not included. So you can be seven years after your PhD because two was already the postdoc and you are still uh, eligible to apply for your first team. For your first team, direct mentioned first team. And we call it, uh, we relate that to homing, uh, still to homing, because this is the same group of people. So you don't have to have any foreign, for example, I don't know, involvement. Can you be after a, a In Polish the first team, yeah. If yeah. You, when you apply for the yeah. first team, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you apply for the reintegration grant, you have to g come from abroad or from the postdoc from abroad. Okay. And uh, yeah, from return, you don't need to be abroad, but to, to working in the bank mm -hmm. or with the administration and you come uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to the research sector. Or you apply for your first team and regardless uh, where you are, however, it's your first team mm -hmm. in your life and you are still within these five years uh, and the leaves, uh, of course, uh, Excluded. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, participate in programs straight after your PhD, or do you have to have at least one postdoc experience? Sti no, no. Still, after PhD is only the, the only requirement in this program in any others as well. So you can, as a as a fresh PhD, just apply to any. However, you have to find your best competition. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, let me introduce myself, Justyna Videra, Adelphi University, New York. Um, I'm interested in a team program, and I'm interested to ask you, is this a program uh, dedicated to Polish scientists who want to open the international collaboration, or could I be, as an international researcher uh, coming from abroad, or even staying abroad in doing research, be a PI and um, have a partner here in Poland? and write this project and invite them to write it with me? Can I be the, the main leader of this or not? Or does this work opposite? Uh, that's, a, that's a good point, actually. So uh, the, the first, of course, the objective is the LM project and then the teams are located here in Poland. Uh, so the team has to be established in a Polish research institution or in a Polish company. That's the. F that's, that's fine. We're coming here like uh, okay. for two summers with my students to do work here. All right. So a team leader who applies for this particular funding has to be a leader here in Poland. So has to have a team around in Poland. Mm -hmm. It can be, of course, not. It doesn't relate to a nationality at all. It can be all nationality uh, who can apply. We have also uh, in our team, previous team program, uh, foreign s scientists establishing uh, teams in Poland. And they are funded. They are funded. However, you have to be careful what, where you are based at the same time when you are funded as a team leader. Because we want this team leader to be really here supervising PhDs uh, running a project, have also students, or, or cooperation is a must because international cooperation within team is required. So, but you can think that you come to Poland for five, four years and you establish your team in Poland and you are funded through this program. I see. Well, I'm trying to find, um, I do what I do, and I'm trying to do this the best I can with whole passion, but I'm trying to find how can I fit in one of those programs. So it looks like I would have to find a partner here who establishes a team, and I could be a, the international partner for them. So that's more clear so for me. So you would be a perfect partner, of course, for the, a team who is funded through this program. And international cooperation within this funding is included. Mm -hmm. So if a Polish, he, he, of course, the leader has to win the competition first. This Polish uh, partner has to win the competition and including you as a foreign partner. So your exchange of students, postdoc, and so on will be possible within this funding. 
How, how open are you in this program to either new team leaders or experienced team leaders? Because I have two opportunities. One is a person who is here for a long time, she has habilitation and she works with us. And a second person is a person who just finished PhD. She was actually my graduate student in collaboration with Warsaw University, and she's about to start her team. So which one would be the better one for me coming so with this program? So we have options. We have options. No, it's not about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have options for both of them. Options for both because uh -huh. the, the established scientists they have to apply. They should apply for team program. Mm -hmm. The young pe uh, people with uh, less experience after PhD, they should apply to the first team, mm -hmm. to the first team, uh, which is uh, another competition. So your choice, uh, you can, both of them can apply, but to a separate competitions. Okay. And both of them can, can involve a foreign partner. Thank you so much. I'm sorry uh, to ask you another question because um, I just moved to Poland okay just to, uh, to 15 days back just 15 days back I moved to uh, Poland okay I work in um, a new program called BioTalent it's a first year chair in po Poland and I'm uh, working as a senior researcher there okay I would like to know whether I can apply for this uh, uh, team program or you can apply to team program to Team tech program, whatever is your objective and the, the subject of the. Of yeah, the but I am already here in Poland. That's why I'm asking. I'm not coming to. Poland. No, no, no. Coming to Poland is not the objective, of course. Uh, the objective is to find the best people wherever they are. Mm -hmm. They can be in Poland, of course. Okay. Coming to Poland applies only to the homing part, mm -hmm. to the only one uh, specific call. Okay. I have uh, one question about a homing program. Uh, you mentioned three category. I have question um, if somebody um, would be postdoc, uh, is postdoc in abroad, uh, he um, should have, he or she should have a minimum like nine months experience uh, of working postdoc and then applying for this homing program. And also my second question is, uh, I'm finishing my PhD. I wonder if I can apply after I graduate uh, for homing program or not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the ninth month uh, postdoc position abroad applies only to Polish nationals. Because for the Polish nationals required, they come back. So, so they have to be at least nine months abroad, the Polish nationals. The all other nationalities can apply straight after a PhD abroad. Okay. Does it? It, it does. Nine month uh, stay abroad means that nine month uh, abroad a person did study or research or research for a PhD or research after a PhD. Nine month minimum. In fact, uh, very often it happens that it takes longer. And the home is open in uh, we hope so. We are not at the stage of uh, yes finalizing these papers, yes, and these uh, contracts of the foundation with the funders. So we. W we would uh, like to, to open all competitions in September. If it's not open in September, don't worry, just check the page uh, f one week later. Yes, uh, or stay in, in touch with uh, us, or just look at our web. Thank you. If I may add something to t your last question. We do have a Facebook channel, so you can like us on Facebook, and we will probably and most likely um, 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 inform about all the new activities. And there is a newsletter where you can sign up, so you can go on our web page and sign up to the newsletter. And then if there are any breaking news, like an opening calls, that will be there. So 
it may happen that the newsletter will be in Polish. However, <laughs> the web is in English, so that's the best source of information for you is the web because it's always translated. Other you know, material may not be. But then we should really think about making a newsletter in both languages if it's not yet like that. What the, what the plan to do it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that question and remarks. Um, I also want to ask you about the team money. How much money are we talking about and uh, how can they be allocated? Meaning, can they be allocated for equipment, uh, for data acquisition? Can they be allocated for the travel? Especially, I'm interested in the um, exchange program for the summer of taking the students from Poland and bringing to my university or vice versa, and also about the salary, summer salaries for the uh, PIs. These are very good questions, and we will be more, much more free to tell you that will be a large amount of money. It will be a lot of money, it will be four or four, five million Polish zloty per team. However, it's much more difficult to, um, to now answer the question specifically about how much money for travel, how much money will be allowed for spe uh, specific issues. For equipment, it is possible to buy equipment, but probably in the limits within 15% or something like that. And what we, what we know, that the general cost will be only 17%. Uh, and uh, probably the other costs, yeah, it may be subject to some limits within this 5 million of Polish zloty, or 4 or 5 million Polish zloty per team, and it, we will publish that. Thank you. Uh, I see that there's uh, not ma very many questions, but I don't actually want to ask a question. I just want to draw attention of, of those who would not perhaps fit into the formal categories that have been sketched up till now by the foundation uh, representatives that we have here, that the National Science Center, which I represent, uh, is also opening a call uh, for proposals from international um, and Polish returning researchers, the name of which is Polones. It will be, well, it will be, um, the information about the program will be made available on our website very soon, up till the end of July for sure in English for the moment, it's uh, in Polish only. Uh, but since the target group is slightly different here, I think we're really not competing <laughs> for the same people. Um, I don't want to go into details because this is not the right time and not the right place, but I just want to draw your attention to this fact and, uh, and to invite you to visit the, the website of the National Science Center if you are either returning or international researchers interested in performing research in Poland and actually not finding your space within the programs that have been um, described during this uh, debate here. Thank you. Fifteen days in your website, you know, I don't really understand anything. So, you know, and uh, finally someone helped me to make the um, uh, summary, five pages, and, you know, two pages for, you know, you are from NCN. Now you finish one call a few days back, right? Okay. So th that is a very uh, important request. You have to have it both in English. And otherwise, it will be very difficult for us, you know. And in fact, one of my colleagues, and who is also came from uh, Portugal, he could not submit the project. He prepared the project completely, and finally, he could not translate, and the system didn't allow him to submit. Yeah, if I just may, okay. The, the, the Polonis program, which we are opening th there in this program, which is explicitly targeting international researchers, the application will be in English. That's it. For the other programs, and in general, the, the law on National Science Center stipulates that the applications have to be submitted in Polish or in Polish and English. So anyhow, the number of uh, the elements which, are have, which have to be drafted in, in Polish is limited. I understand your concerns. We also have our legal constra constraints. But as I say, the program that I briefly mentioned here is going to have applications in English only. So this will be fully understandable and feasible for non-Polish speakers. Thank you for this heartwarming announcement at the end. Um, and uh, 
thank you for your presence. Thank you for um, participating in, uh, in this meeting. I think that uh, the punchline of our meeting is that uh, Poland may be uh, a frontier, uh, frontier place, a uh, wild, wild west place where you can uh, risk something, but uh, you can also find uh, golden nuggets. So um, I hope this is not really the end uh, and we will be in contact. Uh, the, um, this meeting was recorded and you can find it uh, on the on YouTube and uh, please uh, pass on this information uh, from, from this debate to, to your colleagues uh, uh, in Poland and uh, abroad. Uh, the uh, address I mentioned at the beginning, uh, uh, what was the address? Destination, destination. It should be destiny. Destination FNP org PL is, uh, it will be still open. Uh, please send us uh, your remarks, uh, your um, questions. Uh, of course, you can use all the other uh, addre addresses of uh, FNP. Um, and uh, when we will be ready with uh, these programs? Uh, and uh, we will know all the details, uh, hopefully in September. Uh, we will count on your uh, support or your help to disseminate this information and we will be more than willing to participate in any meeting you will organize, so whether in Poland or, or abroad. So hopefully um, see, you, see you in September. Thank you very much. And thank you to Dominika and Zosia for the perfect organization.